All right, stream is online. That took a while. So, uh, it's not a first-person shooter. More of a 2D game. Closing Chrome so it doesn't eat all of my very limited CPU resources. Uh, let's just start a run to be easier to show what it is. So you have a bunch of different characters with different skills. A lot of different skills that do different shit. And they all have a bunch of different passives. I'm too lazy to read through them all, so I'll just explain the one I'll actually be using. The weapon kit is another thing that chooses your passives and your starting weapons. I don't like the starting weapon of this one, Apocalyptic Survival, but I like the effect. Weak point hit is a headshot. It gives you ammo, it heals you, bunch of good shit. He has a 1 million passives, but the short version is basically... Where's my good pistol? There we go. If you shoot somebody in the head, their head explodes, they heal every stage, they gain max shield every stage, and he constantly spawns a drone around him. That helps him kill stuff. I think we have 2 or 3 hours until he design of strength comes to the end, so we'll do this until then. You have the pistol and some unique starting weapon, in this case a crossbow. It is a roguelike game, so we gain various buffs, items and whatnot throughout the game. So, a quick explanation of the skills. This is just a dash. It pushes you backwards, rewards one bullet, and rewards very quickly. This makes a field that slows down enemies and speeds you up. Useful if you wanna kite stuff. And the right mouse button just makes me more accurate when I hold it down, but they move slower. This is a very basic quest, but just so we can show off the game. We'll play one of the weirder ones later. To be clear, basic does not mean weak. This guy is actually super, super strong. I had to reduce the graphics a lot. Uh, I'm basically playing at 30 FPS too, to make the game work on stream. Yeah, uh, they released the early access about two years ago or so. This is an item. Basically, it gives me movement speed and critical damage when I activate it. I can make act items activate automatically. But I like movement speed buffs. So I'll probably just keep this as a panic button for now. The main difference between Synthetic 1 and 2, for those who've played Synthetic 1, is that it has, it's more dependent on character abilities than items. In Synthetic 1 you only have passives. Oops, I got one shot by the Elite. <laughs> Too much talking. Uh, the drone can stun walk and he just and he three shot me. Let's go one more. With the Sniper. I might do a longer stream of Synthetic on Sunday with some friends where I play multiplayer. For now, I'm most this is mostly a test to see if I can stream it properly. Seems fine so far. The sniper's gimmick is that he's very fragile, but gains max shield, the blue stuff, anytime he kills anything with a headshot. So over the course of the game, he gains a lot of max health. Because he's also very accurate and he will almost always be killing things with headshots. Uh, Design of Strife, DOS is today, yeah. We should get it in a few hours. So until we get it, instead of playing Gaius like usual, let's just play something else. Yeah, that's how I know I learned of Synthetic as well from Steph's video. And then I've played it with friends for a very long time. Synthetic 1 anyway. So I bought Synthetic 2 when it came out. Where was the turret here? Uh, this hits your weapons. If your weapons overheat, they burn you. Does a bit of damage and removes the shields. Also weapons become inaccurate, jam, bunch of other shit. You can see the heat here. Yeah, I'll see if I can arrange uh, something for Sunday, because it's 
I like playing it single player too, but it's way more fun if you have four people together. It becomes a complete clusterfuck. Because there is friendly fire in this game when you're playing multiplayer. So many missiles. You can kind of walk between them though, because they're slow. The drone is my summon. It's very squishy, but does high damage. And it can reset my shield if I go next to it. After I die or finish this run, I'll pick a different class, because they all play fairly differently. Half of them are much more melee focused. They all use guns, but you see what I mean. These are permanent upgrades to the character. Movement speed, armor, more shields, source scavenging. Uh, scavenging improves the wood that enemies can drop, and also makes them drop more wood. Forbidden means it's gonna make the game harder and summon some enemies to kill me. Let's just do that. Why not? This is a sniper. You can upgrade all of your weapons. You can hold up to 2 plus the pistol. I wouldn't say DOS is particularly hard. You just need high stats. It's very much the stat check mode, even more than CC is. These waves that spawn get harder as we progress through the game. And when the level ends, it, when, when you go to the portal, it takes you to a new stage. Every few stages there's a boss. Beating the boss gives you some unique skill that's specific to the class. Oh damn, I'm missing so many hits. Not sure if it's uh, because I'm rusty. Or because uh, the game is win windowed. It's not a big deal though. You don't need to hit every head with sniper. Now we'll be streaming for a while. Tear gas. It's an item. We can make it be automatic. You throw it at people. It slows them. Pretty good for it, considering I already have a slow and they stack. Very throw if you're playing multiplayer with a melee character and you throw it in their face. Yeah, it's a shooter roguelike, basically. The shooter bit may depend a bit on what class you're actually playing, though. Wasn't Torchlight Diabu? Not sure how similar to Diablo it is, but yeah. American Hades is a... <laughs> I like that one. This is a sniper. They can kind of two-shot me. But they're fragile themselves. Yellow ones are shotgunners. And these are very strong snipers. When they're damaged, they gain a shield, and they actually have more range than me. Kind of gonna have to kite them around, because they're scary as fuck. You can't headshot somebody that has a shield, so it's a bit hard for the sniper to kill them early on. Case in fucking point, pistol time. One more left. At least they're not terribly accurate. That works in my favor. This slows down their attack speed as well. The blue shit. The drone needs the cute. 
Uh, you can play it with up to four players, which I would highly recommend, by the way. I'm fine with playing multiplayer right now. If somebody has synthetic, you can just go set up a game in the lobby. I also play uh, Slay the Spire, Horn Work. I play a lot of roguelikes. One that I've ne one game that I've never played is Inscription. I kind of want to play that on, uh, on stream. I already own it, but I haven't played it yet, so I might do that at some point. Yeah, I really like the music. I even used it for art videos a few times. The red sign means it's an elite. They drop an upgrade kit for the weapon when they die. And they're obviously tankier, do more damage, etc. I haven't streamed Slay the Spire yet. Okay, let's start explaining the weapons. You have stats here. Damage, armor penetration, damage against shields, headshot damage, attack speed, blah, 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 blah. You have passives here. Weak point kills grant bonus damage, shots have poison. You have a different kind of passive here. Oh, stacking weapon damage. And you have upgrades here. You get one of three upgrades and you can choose. Movement speed, last shot does bonus damage and stuns, or crit chance and crit damage. We'll go with the crit chance for now. This class is more mobile than it looks. Because his its dash has a very low cooldown. By the way, this is something that's not fixed in the text. Uh, so this says it costs 1,500 health. Most character starts with 3,000 health. The sniper does, starts with only 2,000. And this thing actually does 2000 damage, so if I take it, it will instantly kill me. The thing I took slightly increases my max health. It's not worth it on Sniper, but all the other upgrades are pointless too. Not a good job for a Sniper overall. Oops, kind of walked into, into them. There's basically three classes that are good with snipers. This one is best with some um, semi-automatic weapon. Or even something that's fully automatic. Because he shoots very accurately, no matter the weapon. It's kind of counterintuitive, but he's very accurate with machine guns. Defin he's definitely one of the more slower paced classes, which is why I picked him first, so I can talk about the game. I'll pick something that's more fast faster paced for the next run. He's slower paced because he just kites stuff around. But there are classes that just dash in full melee and start murdering stuff. more mechanics to explain. Okay, so this is the health bar. You can see it has three parts. The red thing is like normal health. Blue thing is a shield. The white thing is plating. It absorbs one damage instance up to 1000 and then disappears. It can get refreshed from drops from enemies. AOE explosions from these shitters. No, they don't have any weak spot, so they're a bit annoying to kill quickly with Sniper. The cars are super high damage and no weak spots too. But they're not that tanky. Item box. Uh, some guns have reduced damage with range, yeah. It's more noticeable on some guns than others. This is a fairly long range sniper. So you're barely going to notice it because the re damage reduction happens around here.
this thing fires homing missiles at me. We'll try to keep a wall between us and it. Wait for the cars. And run away from the car because it can probably kill me in two seconds. There's uh, about a million passives that characters have by default that I'm too lazy to explain because they're different for every character. But in short, this guy is more accurate with everything. He gains max health when he kills stuff. Stuff explodes when he kills them. Uh, what else? He summons the stupid drone that kills stuff for him. A bunch of stuff. The stupid drone is also really good at in spawning in your face and tanking bullets that were meant for the enemy. Guns get less accurate if you're moving. If you stay still, they become more accurate. I never explained what the item I got does. Let's do it while I clean up the elite wave. So basically, anytime I dash, if I have it automatically, the item triggers and it makes me do damage around where I dash. It also makes my dash regenerate a bit quicker for a bit. This is much more useful on melee characters because they end up in melee when they dash. When I dash, I obviously run away from stuff. When you kill an elite wave, it drops a healing kit, but I'm on full health because nothing's damaged me. Oh, it can have more. It has more in multiplayer. Also, it's early in the game. We need to scale the difficulty up. Anytime you get the red wave, the difficulty scales up. And it starts giving you harder waves. I Seriously though, I'd really recommend playing this in multiplayer. It's That's where it's the most fun by far. No shield. Kite for a bit. Nuclear Throne is a comparison I saw as well. But I haven't played either of those. Okay, so with the pistol you can see it has a limit to its range. Bullets don't fly infinitely. The range of the weapon and the damage for for all stats you can change by fucking with, around with upgrades from here. Which reminds me that I do have an upgrade. No recoil. This is useless as a sniper. I don't remember what those gives at all. Uh, makes you shoot shrapnel at close range. Useless for sniper. And twin link. This is the only option. 15% chance to fire an additional shot. This is also kind of questionable on snipers, because that uh, additional shot doesn't have the exact same trajectory. So it might uh, just fly off and hit nothing. But the other ones were more, more useless. This can occasionally hit stuff. There is a bug in multiplayer that they really love to abuse. Where if you don't like the upgrades you get, you can get rid of the upgrade kit without putting an upgrade in the weapon. But for single player, you're stuck with what you get. Now that we're getting terrible upgrades right now. Well, this one is kind of arm, but other than that. Uh, so, this gives us a chance to bleed. It's percent chance, so fa better and faster firing weapons, and this is a sniper. It also tends to one-shot stuff, so not much value there. Bigger magazine is a bit whatever, because it rewards quickly anyway. And this makes it more accurate. Which isn't terribly interesting, because Sniper already makes it accurate. Certain classes modify the values of weapons. For example, there's a Breacher class that plays mostly with shotguns. He makes weapons less accurate in general, so you have to get into melee. I think that covers most of the basics for the game. I think I'll reset after the first boss because I really want to play the Chrono Trooper class. I just went with this so I can talk about the game mechanics. This is the favorite weapon of a friend of mine. Uh, my laptop hasn't been set on fire yet. 
Uh, Elden Ring 30 at worst, to be honest. I had to lower the FPS a lot, so it's only running at 30 FPS. But the game is playable. This is the absolute favorite weapon of a friend of mine. I absolutely despise it, because he constantly team, team kills me with it. It's basically a big artillery. The line of sight kind of scales with difficulty. They get faster as the difficulty rises. Uh, no, the one that got hit by a car is someone else. He's, the one that got hit by a car isn't really a friend of mine. Uh, he's somebody I knew in school. Wonder if he's dead. I'll be really surprised if he isn't, to be honest. Because that guy had something wrong with his brain. Okay, first three stages done. This is a different kind of shop. Every seven, the seventh bullet gains critical chance and critical damage. Extra armor. When we are in melee, we gain money. We'll take this, because we can consistently get it on this rifle. No, no, drunk people tend to live the longest, but he was a druggy, not a drunkard. So he should be gone. Also, seriously, he fried bullets to make them explode for fun. If he hasn't managed to shoot himself, an accident, I will be shocked. This boss is kind of unfair for the sniper, because he actually has a weak spot and... Sniper does uh, somewhat high damage to weak spots. Also, you can farm this boss infinitely with Sniper. Because the small shields that he spawns have weak spots, so you can stack max shield from them. I'm too lazy to do it, but that's one way to abuse the game. Let's just kill the boss and reset. If you don't kill the small shields though, they start to swarm you. At least their, their aim is bad with the lasers, so you can kind of just go in a circle. Okay, just need to clean the shit so I can show the final part of the game. They will. Final one. After you beat the boss, you get a chest that heals you and lets you choose between one of two upgrades. Every quest has about seven, eight different upgrades. Weak point hits stun and cause bleeding. Or we get a few that regenerates our shield and gives us extra money. Alright, I'll stop this run here so I can show off a different quest too. There's also a save option where you can save out of the run. And continue it later. Which causes an endless amount of bugs, but let's leave that aside. <laughs> okay, so this is the most ridiculous quest in the game. And it's all about this skill. It teleports you forwards. If you teleport on something, you do a bunch of damage. Hello, Jamal. In order for this to work, you need to have 250 shields so you can consume them to do the damage. This skill has two functions. If you have uh, enough shields, it does a damaging wave. If you don't have enough shields, it regenerates your shields. This skill instantly refills your shields, uh, makes your dash regenerate quicker, you move and fire faster. When it ends, it completely depletes your shields. And you have several things here. Two of these heals you, that one I use makes you invincible for a few seconds. This quest is a kind of melee. He is also by far the most fun quest in the game. I just wanted to do a different quest first because he is very difficult to follow if you don't know what's happening in the game. He is difficult to follow if you know what's happening in the game. Every time he uses a skill, he gains uh, ability, ability damage. And when he uses 10 skills, he refunds the ability damage to regenerate his shields. Yeah, but uh, the enemy from the hit vent teleports slower. And every quest has some bonus for weapons. And a bunch of other shit. Losing shields grants 50% dot chance. 
So he's not as suicidal as he looks. Yeah, this is my favorite class in the game. Uh, it took me a while to get it because it's a bit complicated. It's also, I think, not sure how streamable this is because he's a bit hard to follow. The gun he starts with is also my favorite weapon in the game, incidentally. Instant shield again, damaging aura. And he puts these blue piles on the ground, which also regenerate your shields. He has starts with two stacks of his dash and it regenerates one per five seconds. Now, we need to talk about the gun too. It's a really goofy gun. So, it shoots really slowly, like this. After he teleports, he gains 80% fire rate. It becomes very inaccurate, but and it has a no ammo cost chance. This is by far my favorite gun in the game. Now, if I just hold down the button, it doesn't shoot. It need, it has a bit of a charge time. So what you do is you just start charging and then you dash. Honestly, this guy is a bit broken, but he's just so fun to play. You can also die uh, e very quickly if you're not paying attention, so his brokenness is excusable. Looting that regenerates shields. It also gives you movement speed when you step on it. Sadly, the fun rifle has very limited ammo. Normally, the starting weapons are just to get you through the early game. Uh, but some of them are legitimately powerful weapons on their own, if you can get them going. This is one of them. This thing stuns, so we're just being a bit careful with it. Abusing the wall to do the wave safely. And then we use the ESQ to regenerate all the shields. Uh, high risk, high reward is a good description of this class, yeah. This summons an orbital laser that shoots at stuff. It also slows them down. Very goofy. Yeah, he's kind of a glass cannon, which is why the skill I take is the one that makes him invincible for a bit. This isn't like my oh shit I fucked up button. Uh, this guy kills everything. If you get trolling, he's just a murder machine. Because you can reach the point where the dash just one shots everything. And he has infinite dashes. He doesn't always get a god run, but when he does, it's by far the most fun god run in the game. Does this laser do friendly fire damage? Yeah, but it's very little. It barely depletes the shield. Case in point. Oh, we have weapon bullets for the fun gun. Fuck, I love this weapon. Hmm. My two favorite classes are both melee, and the sniper is probably the third favorite. But sniper is much lower pace than the other two. Yeah, the uh, synthetic too. Synthetic is a different game. I really enjoy the friendly fire part of the game. Mostly because when a friend annoys me, I can just shoot them. Or in case of one particular friend, he's uh, just treat him as a hostile from the beginning. Oops. Kind of almost killed myself there. It happens. You also have a bunch of items that are essentially extra skills. We'll go over items as we review them. Okay, so this can make your gun shoot at a longer range and reduces the damage fall off. Also makes bullets faster. This makes it semi, which we obviously don't want on the burst gun. And this increases the chance to not use bullets. We definitely want this. Because the gun already has a chance to not use bullets. Yeah, I have an arrangement with my friend whose favorite class is the demolition. The guy just exposes everything. Uh, he, it's okay to shoot me, but if he shoots me, I'm going to shoot him back. So I just treat him as a neutral party when he plays Demolition, instead of a co-op. These are the annoying snipers from last time. 
They actually have very little health, so the cryo laser kind of just murders them. Oh, good to know. Shield's about to run out. We reset in a safe place, and then we go back in. Wait out. Go for the sniper. Also, the dashes themselves do bonus damage to enemies with shields. But that's really relevant because... If you build him right, he'll do enough damage to just watch with everything. Oh, also you can upgrade skills and items. I never even got to, da to the sniper. Oops. I should have played one more stage. Try to get rid of all the snipers. Dash into a shotgun guy and almost die. It happens. The yellow ones are the shotguns. I like how they're a really bright color. That lets you tell them apart from other enemies. Because they're absolutely deadly in melee range. But harmless to the long distance. Depends on the weapon. Uh, the quas we played a bit earlier. The sniper has almost perfect accuracy with everything. This quas does not. This weapon even becomes more inaccurate when you use it. Uh, we're kind of in a shitty place here. Let's move out. Get the shield back. Oops, death rockets. The worst ever design 6 star is Suter because I hate her S3 sound. Uh, beyond, beyond that I have no idea. I literally don't care about 6. Maybe I'm good and the dash is busted. <laughs> Two things can be true. Uh, don't need this. This thing spawns enemies with rocket. It's annoying. Yellow shop. A uh, bunch of other upgrades we'll look into a second. Let's just kill the wave first. Should be a couple more. And at the end there is one that spawns a healing kit. Oh, and no, an upgrade kit. Thank you. Let's just treat through them. So, weapon perk power is this shit over here. These are the perks. Normally there's something that says perks here. I'm not sure why it's not there. So if I take this, it's going to increase the chances to not use a bullet and increase the attack speed even more. Let's give that a try. Yep, so it we now have a 50% plus 15%, a 65% chance to not use ammo when firing, and a massive increase in attack speed after dash. So let's just test it out. That's the stuff. Okay, now about this shop. So this shop is all about stuff that have downsides. Except the two that don't, but never mind that. Yeah, all of these effect stacks. You can get a 100% chance to not use any bullets. So, the items I currently own. Currently owning a bit is important, gain 40% cooldown reduction, but we start each combat with heat. If your heat reaches 100, you overheat your weapon and lose all shields and take damage. This is the Nigerian Prince Cam. South Africa with an urgent request. Uh, just don't get this, obviously. Minus 100% crit chance, but 40% currency gain, and 2 scavenging. Scavenging improves the wood. All of these suck, I don't want anything here. Quas experience gain, if you don't want any of the sucky ones, but I'm already max level. So there's nothing there for me. Do I take the Nigerian Prince Cam? I think it gives you a weapon and an upgrade kit or something like that. If you pay a stupid amount of money. Oh, just go. I wanna save my money for when I get to the point where I can upgrade his DPS queue. Yeah, all of those are trash. I got the trash options. This shop has some really broken stuff too, but I didn't get any of them. The golden chip isn't trash in particular. 40% cooldown reduction is insane. But you need to have items to make use of it, which I uh, do not. 
Uh, this skill has a limited amount of uses. Tripper level. It makes me invincible for a bit. But I can't just spam it all willy nilly. Almost overheated. It happens. I need something to fix the overheat on this. Or it's going to kill me. The overheat is way more manageable than synthetic one, by the way, but it can still kill you. Sniper? Oops. No, never mind, it's not a sniper. Shield times out, so we get the thing on the ground. But I still have this weapon. I'm fine with the pistol. We have a map where we can see shit. If you haven't picked up any items, they're revealed there. Oops. But I can't hit the weapon on me. That was kinda soapy. Got too aggressive. These cars are actually dangerous after all. Don't get hit by the missile. Oh damn, the enemy survived, that was scary, because I'm at zero health. So I actually don't have any way to regenerate my health at the moment. I gain a bit between levels, something drop health kits. So I'm entirely relying on my shield to keep me alive. This thing explodes, you know, obviously. So try not to walk into it and die, like, come on. Abuse the wall. And one second before descent. Shield, because I'm not in a safe place. Find the wall. Okay, all cleaned up. But we have no ammo. Let's look in the box. Threat detector. Basically, it applies a debuff on enemies. I can make items automatic from here. So, this applies a debuff that makes them take more damage and have less armor. Ah, uh, it's not great. There's be active items that actually do something more direct or better. Which reminds me. What do we have for the third upgrade? Movement speed, recoil, or bonus weak point damage. I'll take the movement speed. I like walking faster. No dashes. Careful with the car. Destroy the stupid rocket shit. This thing keeps spawning enemies. And when they spawn, they have one rocket they can use. They're being pests. The movement speed. Oh, he died. Shop for items. Okay. So, this buffs my weapon shots with flat damage. This makes your weapon overheat and shit. And anytime you lose your shield, or when you press it, it pops a bubble which increases your max shield and massively increases your healing, your shield regeneration. We're taking that. This is some unique item. This one is bad. Anytime you take health damage above 100, it gives you a charge, and that charge gives you a chance to apply bleeding. There is a class that doesn't have any shields, and this item is usable on it, but even then there's better in sword stuff. Shotgun guy. The shield is nice though. Can just go into it to regenerate faster. Very good safety item. Body upgrades. 
permanently increase critical chance, health, critical damage or shield. I like to stack shield and the chrono, because you live and die by the shield. You don't have infinite ammo, you can see the ammo I have on the right side, per weapon. Enemies drop more ammo, there's ammo boxes on the map. This thing is a suicide drone. It explodes if it walks into me. Boss spawns them, so being close to the boss is very unhealthy. Because they do about 2000 damage, so if they hit me right now, I'm going to die. Run away! Shit, I'm walking with my pistol. Okay, that's more of the most of the side drones cleaned up. Heat is down. Run away from the boss. He also has a hour that slows. Yeah, I still don't want to be hit by these things. Run away, run away. Done. So this is the big hero chest and it gives us some unique upgrades. This is the most broken upgrade in the game. I gain another charge on my dash and every dash permanently increases the damage the dash does. You can imagine why this is broken. Either of those are good on their own. But together they really let him pull off. Yep, permanently. I also... Oh shit, dog. <laughs> I, I was reading the chat, fuck. Uh, I'm still pretty squishy though. Uh, so I need to pay more attention. Run away for a bit until the shield regenerates. The drones of death. This used to be a lot worse before. Uh, those shots can almost... The burst they fire can almost kill you instantly. But th the bullets used to be super fast. Now you can at least kind of dodge them. So they're more manageable now. Okay, let's pay attention for a bit, so I can survive at least long enough to show you the skill upgrade shop at the end of the 4th level. <laughs> Money on the ground. Which I somehow didn't pick up. Throws a disc to turn stuff. Mm, not too great. You need to use it manually, but I don't think the effect is worth paying attention to. To go through the trouble of too many dogs, run the fuck away. Dogs are scary, I don't want to deal with dogs. The downside of the sh this big shield dome is that it's entirely neutral. Enemies can get it too, if I cast it on them. It's not a big downside for the sniper because the dash does something like triple damage to shields. The last upgrade costs two upgrade kits, but it's something unique to different weapon types. Critical chance and critical damage. Or when we lose or gain 500 shields, we gain a massive dodge and movement speed buff. This thing is probably better, because it will make me unkillable. But I like this weapon doing infinity damage, so I'm gonna build towards that. There's also a weapon kit that uh, adds skills here on the weapons, that permanently upgrade your weapon, but we haven't gotten one of them yet. Yeah, I agree dodge is better. But I want the other one. Oops, no dashes. Other end of the wall. Let's chew out there for a bit. <laughs> Not sure how I missed him the first time around. Shield was. So we use the item to regenerate it. And ideally stop them from walking in. Oops, the money. Oh, 
will kill the big fuck off turret because it one shot stuff. These things have a shield when they're damaged, it makes them damage immune. Couldn't proc it. Wait until it runs out of missiles, then dive. They also do damage back to me when they explode. I can just kill this one through the wall. Okay. It's the first damage instance, which is kind of irritating to play around. Have I damaged this one yet? Yeah, I have. Dash around a bit. Oops. No, no dashes. Wait until it stops firing missiles. And we're done with these fucks. I play on mouse and keyboard. Hello, yeah, Sky Guy. Oops, Drone of Death. <laughs> Reading chat in this game is hard. Uh, just keep it safely. Through the wall. Dash on the sniper. This thing first, then the draw, and then shoot. Checking if I've missed any enemies in the back, because they might get aggroed later. And jump me. Sniper there. A big sniper. Oh uh, yeah, this is one of my most played roguelikes. Though I do mostly play it with friends. I think I still have more hours in Risk of Rain 2. But honestly I like this one more, even in single player. And Risk of Rain 2 has uh, bad multiplayer. Let's put it like that. Ammo, bullets. I don't really follow the ratings of games, so I have no idea why it's falling off. The alarm bell chest. We'll go back to it in a second. Let's clean up the area. Okay, so if I open that chest, it's going to summon an enemy wave of Chrono Troopers that teleport around like just like me. I like the first synthetic too. Like, I played them both. Kind of enjoyed the multiplayer in Synthetic 2 more though. Hey, I got one person to buy Synthetic 2. I'm happy. Stream successful. Wish I was being sponsored so I get, get money out of this. <laughs> But I just like the game. And at the end of the fourth level, and at certain levels after that, we get a shop that lets us upgrade our skills or our items. Now, since Chrono revolves around one skill, and one skill only, that's what we're going to upgrade. Malek using permanently increase its power by 0.5%, and a 20% chance to not use the skill. We already have permanently stacking power, but a little more doesn't hurt. And I don't like the 20% too much, because it's a bit inconsistent. I do love the 30% reduced cooldown though. It goes from 4.5 seconds to 3.5. We're dropping over money on this skill. Uh, just some flat power, or movement speed after we use it. Movement speed. Final upgrade. And this is the most broken damage one. After we use the shift, um, it gives us a 50% damage boost for half a second. This takes its damage through the roof.
Oh yeah, Eureka in Dark Knights had a really annoying event to get to unlock her. I, I remember being super annoyed doing it on CN. Because there's no skip button and you have to wait. Damage is rising. Yeah, it's not hard, it's, an, it's just annoying. It's kind of impossible to fail, it's basically just a prolonged cutscene where you have to press buttons. Which is worse than it being hard as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Damage starting to hyperscale. Kind of went to tip, so we'll use one charge to make sure we don't die stupidly. Yeah, I still haven't done it on Ian. I have did it and got bored. Uh, you just uh, put one picture in, then go out top for two minutes, then come back and put another in. There's no active component to what you're really doing. Oops. Bunch of shit. The dogs first, because they're scary. Anything we missed? Uh, clear enough. Oh, the one shot dudes are here. Uh, we find some cover. I pick the scavenging because it gives me plating. It makes enemies drop plating, which keeps me alive because it prevents one shots. The dudes with the yellow dudes with the block helmets fire a lightning bolt. That does a lot of damage. A moment. I got a phone call.
Sorry for that. We shouldn't have any more interruptions. Too big to j jump through. Have to use the bridge. Gives us a chance to not use any ammo. Can be very funny. But I don't need other things to make it work. Let's see if we can get them. So if I use this with, together with my guns effect, it basically doesn't use bullets. But it will still overheat and then I'll die. So I need to combine it with something else to really get the full value. There is an item that reduces the heat from the weapons. So we'll see if we can get it. This increases our shield by a bit and we get a stronger one. Every time we summon something a bit out of breath, that'll be fine in a moment. This thing in the center buffs everything. Okay, level done. There is a special shop here. If we have some summons or team players, we can do a bunch of damage to them to gain a luck stat bonus. The luck affects random events. I don't have any summons, so it will just do, do damage to me. And they don't need the luck for anything, so we're just skipping it. And this level has the final kind of unique store that we'll see in a bit. It's the blue one down there. So, it can give your weapon a unique random perk. That's upgrades here. Permanently increase critical damage by infinity. Or increase the power of all the attachments. Oops, sorry, didn't see you. These things on the weapon, these are the attachments. This one is always the best because it gives insane value. Because you can get about 500 stacks on it. But this one is kind of funny. Let's just throw the gacha instead. Even though this is 100% better. A chance to give us plating and kills. I assume I set the crit damage. Hmm, that's a nice amount of plating. We won't go down easy. This is being something's bugging out. I should only be able to have a maximum of one plating without upgrades. Yeah, I mentioned this before, but this class is actually extremely 
broken. He's a little bit hard to play, but his damage is just insane. It's rest it's weaker in multiplayer because enemies have a bit more health. So it's harder to get to the point where you one shot everything. But far from impossible. No dashes. Enemies everywhere I go. This is the one shot turret. It got one shot. Two, two, five. This damage became so high because of the enrage skill. The upgrade we put in. It increases the damage for by 50% every time I dash. Thing is, it stacks as you can see. So in that moment where I have a bunch of enrage buffs, the damage goes insanely high. Also permanent damage scaling from two separate sources. That also helps. Hey, this is the best item in the game. Let's make some space for it. Or at least my favorite. So, the description is really long, but in short, when you press the button, it makes all enemies in the area eject their weapon clips. And then it delays the reload. So they don't have any bullets and they have to reload very slowly. It's basically a massive AoE stun. More critical chance for this. And it's too expensive. Let's upgrade something else now. We'll upgrade this thing. It actually does a fair bit of damage on its own. We should be to the boss fight now. And after the boss fight boss fight. We are going to go to a different set of enemies that all and half of them can teleport like I can. The fights get really wild there. Cleaning up the trash spawn and then I'll kill the other boss there. My damage is a bit high. Okay, so this reduces my weapon damage permanently, but gives me even more reduced cooldowns. Which works on my dash, so now the dash has a 2.7 cooldown. And the uh, ESQ, this thing, reduces the cooldown on the dash even more while it's active. Oops. Need to kill these ones. And now we go to the final stage. So, half the enemies here can teleport like I can, or apply some debuffs that slow in an AoE. This is a big artillery cannon that does a lot of damage. Shoots big missiles. Spawns enemies and shoots big missiles. We're kind of getting to the point where it's hard to track. Sorry for that. But we shouldn't be here for much longer. Yeah, I was a bit worried for the later part of the chrono run. Because I know that this is kind of epileptic to watch from a third person perspective. It's not bad when you're actually playing it, but it's impossible to follow from a third person perspective. If you want to, I can switch to a different class that doesn't do stuff like this all the time. We're near the end of the game anyway, or I can just finish it first. Up to what you guys want, I've beaten it a bunch of times. So I have no preference. 
Okay. If it's fine with you guys, we'll keep going for a little bit more. When you beat the game, you actually go into something like New Game Plus. But I won't bother with that at that point for long. Oh, there's other ag aggressive classes. They're just uh, slower paced aggressive classes. This is the death car of death. It one shots everything, basically. Uh, it only gets summoned during the emergency wave, when the terror level raises. Basically, it does infinity AoE damage, and if, it, if, you let you, if you let it shoot you, you're going to die horribly. To put it mildly. We broke that item to sell it for money. It's not a bad item. Okay, we'll go and finish the run. Have... What's that chest over there? I have no idea. Oh, we finally found the, one of these wall. Normally you get more of these across the map, but for some reason this is the first one we find. It gives you three upgrades for your weapon. In this case, attack speed, ammo capacity, or armor penetration. They stack over here, and because we have a buff that buffs this stuff, it will also buff this stuff. I think we have enough attack speed. I'll go with ammo capacity. Larger clip. By the way, the way heating works in this game, it's basically a function of your magazine capacity and your attack speed. So if a weapon has a bigger magazine and attacks faster, it overheats less. This is a god tier weapon. So, might just get it. I have 11 upgrade kits anyway. This is also a weapon that fires relatively quickly. But let's see if we can push it a little more. Chance to not use bullets was the best thing there. More damage, armor penetration, or armor regeneration when we lose shields. I think this game can get messier than Risk of Rain because it's much easier for me to reach the point where you kind of kill everything in Risk of Rain, especially with the polywood that you get from the Void DLC. But I have hundreds of hours in Risk of Rain, so the clusterfuck of enemies doesn't look messy to me in Risk of Rain. This game is more chaotic to me. Damage range, more attack speed or crit chance. Let's take the attack speed. And finally we'll take the movement speed that we skipped last time. The gimmick of this weapon is basically that it's just fairly accurate at long range. Did I kill everything in the map or is there some, something left over? Oops, I killed it with the dash. How am I gonna show what the weapon does if you all die? Stay still for a bit. Shop for items. This is the best summon in the game, but we're not interested in that right now. I'll upgrade this a bit. If I can increase its power a bit, it will give me a 100% chance to not use bullets. No money to upgrade this, so we'll upgrade the shield. It costs a bit of shield to activate, but then it gives me even more shields. We're a bit too overpowered for it to matter this run, but this is the hardest level in the game, normally. Because you start in this small corner, and the enemy... and there... it's just full of enemies on this map. <laughs> I'm 99% sure I killed myself with something. Let's go and check the combat walk. After the game, you can open a walk that tells you what happens. Let's see what killed me here. Because I'm not sure what happened there. You attacked police chrono trooper, police chrono trooper attacked you for 1000, 1300, for 2.6. Yeah, I'm not really sure what killed me there. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, I killed myself somehow, but I'm not sure what. Okay, so this is the first instance. We attacked them for 6000 damage. We kill them with 13,000 damage, ignore the math. Pulsar Defender attacks our shield for 1,800. That's not enough to get through the shield, by the way. Police Defender attacked police, Chrono Troopers. So that's some other mob hitting some other mob with the explosion. We picked up money. Okay, so it's Police Chrono Trooper that then Orbital Recon that hits us three times. All of those are backstabbed, so they do bonus damage. Killed you by dealing... Yeah, I got hit by four stuff at once. I think I dashed into something and... Uh, 
ate an instant burst. Haven't had that happen in a long time. Usually it's a bit hard to get one shot. Okay, so, uh, you said you prefer melee classes, so pick between the, uh, these three. This guy goes around and stabs people with a knife, kind of like the Chrono, but he doesn't have a dash. This guy is actually just immortal, he's broken. And this guy dashes into people and throws bombs in their faces. Which one do you want to see? The green guy, one vote for the green fuck. I agree that green is the best cover, by the way. <laughs> green is my favorite cover. Green it is. Okay, he's very similar to the Chrono, but he's a bit weaker in the early game. So, uh, his gimmicks are this. He's invincible while dashing and can't be hit. He has an E that makes gives him 100% dodge and damage reflects, but he can't shoot while he's using it. And then he has a knife with which he stabs people, like this. If you stab someone while dashing, it does bonus damage. If you kill something with a knife, it refreshes the knife and he can use it again. And if you press the E, he reflects damage. The dash itself also does damage when he moves through enemies. And he has a bunch of passives I'm too lazy to read. We we'll only talk about this one. He drops these dog tags when he kills enemies, which refreshes his shields and give him items at certain thresholds. The knife is AoE. Oops, almost killed myself. This one's a bit more fragile than the Chrono. And the other gimmick is that with the kit I'm using on him, he starts with no gun. So he's a bit hard to get started with, but once you get him going, he's insane. He's easier to reach a threshold where he one-shots everything with the knife. This is the upgrade chest. We upgrade the pistol, very useful. I'm sure you can imagine. The knife has some mechanics I haven't talked about. Basically, it has stacks. The more stacks the knife has, the more damage it does. You gain stacks by killing stuff or by picking up these dog tags from the ground. I'm about to sneeze. Remove the plating, so we can one-shot safely. This pistol is very weak. I just use it because it gives him range damage, because it's accurate at the distance. Ah, uh, it's way better than it was on Wunch, yeah. I also got it at Wunch, when the early access started. It took me a while before I recommended it to my friends who play synthetic to buy it too. But I think it's pretty great now. It's somewhat different from the first game, but it's uh, worth playing too. This one is mo more focused on skills. When you dash into something, friendly or enemy, you put a bomb on it. It then explodes. Funny, but not too useful. By the way, when does uh, the Strife event come out on uh, Dark Knights? Is it in one or two hours? The fuck even hit me there. Early access moment. Two hours. All right. Oh, I missed him with the knife because I dashed into the crate like this. Let's move back a bit, have them group up. Instead only did it came. 
Well, works for me. Oh, the item killed him. That's a first. Oh, that's what damaged me earlier. <laughs> Sight of those friendly fire. <clears throat> that's why when I went back into this thing after a bit, I took damage there. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of weird, but uh, the heavy gunner is a bit wimpy in synthetic too. The recon is closer to the heavy gunner from the first game than the heavy gunner. I think he needs a buff. Because synthetic 2 is much more ability focused, but his the heavy gunner is still gun focused. So unless he get a good gun, he doesn't do much. He's not unplayable or anything. I can do a run with him too. Yeah, uh, he is literally called Commando. I think. He was called a Raider in the first game, and I think they changed the name to Commando. I think he's called Commando and I didn't like the name and I just kept calling him Raider, because that's what he was called in the first game. The Demolitionist isn't awful, but I hate it with a burning passion because a friend of mine likes it, and all he ever does when he plays is kill me. Damage reflect. We'll take this or this. I love the police breaching shotgun. This weapon is awesome. If you shoot someone in melee range, it deals 200 bonus damage. Thing is, it's a shotgun. Every pellet does 200 bonus damage. That's a lot of damage. Very nasty group. Let's see if we can bait them here. They have low health, so I can just one shot them with a knife. Oh my god. The stupid bomb is going to kill me, I swear. It's damaged me more times than it's damaged the other team. Cry loot. No more bomb. This item is suicide on Raider. Using this shit to kill. Try to close the distance. Because we're not so good at range. Which one was the other shotgun? The honorary domina dominator? Because there's more than one automatic shotgun in the game right now. I think there's like three. Gain one upgrade kit for these upgrades. Reward speed or deviation. Uh, reward speed is good on this. Because the guy reloads slowly. Does bonus damage and shot basically. Makes the weapon more accurate and shoot further if I stand still. And no recoil. This is the only thing that does anything for me. Yeah, the Dominator. That's not a bug, that's a feature. That's just how the Dominator works. If you can have some way to keep a pizza ammo, it fires like a machine gun. I particularly enjoy how shotguns can reload bullets one by one. Not all shotguns, of course, but some of them. Works well compared to the other weapons. It has a funny stuff if used the entire clip. Because of another mechanic I haven't bothered to explain. So if your clip is empty and you start reloading, if you press the green thing, you instantly reload. Same as the first game. Just for people, just pointing it out for people who haven't played either of the games. This thing does damage if I'm in melee and bombard you with artillery. So I don't really want to dash into it. Upgrades. Ignore armor. This isn't a big deal. This shot can't get through. Fire extra pellets when you're in melee, basically. Nah. I'll take this. Oops. Lost all my shields. Dash behind the crate and wait for the knife.
Uh, I have no idea whether it records when you beat the ending with the monthly squad. You have to try it out, tell me. Uh, ricochet is fairly safe in the second game. I haven't ever been killed by a, ric a Ricochet in the second game. I've been killed by my friend not having the concept of friendly fire, but never by Ricochet. On the other hand, he constantly killed me with Heavy Gunner's Ricochet in the first game, because that was his favorite class. The Nemesis Sniper is kind of nerfed in the second game. It doesn't actually have a 50% chance to blow your own brain out anytime you fire it. So in a way that's a buff. But it's not uh, funny this suicidal like it was before. Knife kind of sucks against shields by the way. 50% shield damage. But the uh, shotgun can strip shields and then the knife can finish off the health. Very reliable shotgun. Let's get out of there. Never mind, they, they grouped up. Let's go in there. I'd say positioning is a bit more important with the Raider, because he's not quite as mobile as the Chrono. You can't just dash through walls. You have to keep in mind how many dashes you have left. This fire is a big laser when it charges. Decent item. Uh, dog. Let's get the ammo. Many dogs. Pull them here so they group up and just kite. We can kill them safely with the knife because while we're dashing, we're invincible. It's a fourth of a second die frames basically. When you get enough of the dog tax, you gain bad items that aggro enemies before the mines even uh, actually load up. If they step on it, they get sna snared and take some damage. It used to be that you can proc them yourself and kill yourself on them in a really stupid manner. But that doesn't happen anymore. I always sell this item because it's really the opposite of what you, you ought to do with the Raider. You wanna go in and be mobile, not uh, sit and camp around corners. Oops. Frame drops. Okay, so this is the best upgrade here. Whenever you sell an item, it increases the power of all of your other items. And it gives you a free item now. This gives you a weapon. And this has a chance to shoot you in the head. If it doesn't shoot you in the, he in the head, it permanently gives you a buff that makes you fire more ammo. Shots when you fire. The knife stacks go much higher than synthetic one. My record for no more than one whoop is 32 million. Because you can upgrade stuff that improves the scaling of the knife. It very quickly reaches the point where it just one shots everything. Oh, it's the throw boss. So, this boss has a skill where it drops artillery on you. But it drops out artillery per player. So when you're in multiplayer, it does it four times and... Well, you'll see why that's a problem in a bit. So this is what it looks like when there's one player. And these AoEs are much bigger than they look. Like, this is going to hit me if I stay, if I stay here. If there's four players, it spawns four times as many. So if you all don't move very carefully, it covers the entire map and there's nowhere left to dodge them. For some classes, this is fine, because... Some classes can become invincible, or just outright tank them. Others just die. Without good coordination here. Yeah, there's a few bosses that you can't knife to death. The final boss is like that too. Which makes sense, considering how easily you could one-shot the final boss otherwise.
out of ammo. The explosion is actually dropped more ammo too. But there's ammo box in the map as well. But he'll die in one shot next time he shows up. Upgrades! Um, this gives me a longer dash, basically. Also slightly slows the attack speed of enemies. The other thing makes me fire faster while dashing, which is too bothersome for me to use. Because if I'm dashing, I'm probably going to stab something with a knife. So I don't care about the attack speed in that moment. Uh, the Russian roulette isn't bad, it's just not useful on a shotgun. Because of how extra shots work. Extra shots are basically extra pellets. So 8 plus 1 is 9, 1 plus 1 is 2. Any weapon that isn't a shotgun that doesn't fire multiple hits is much better with it. Serbian moment, down the aircraft with with a rifle. Oh, the dog doesn't want to bite me. Pathfinding failure. Whoa. If I dash through them, I slow them down for a bit. That's the upgrade we got. Also, the dash itself is longer than it used to be. This is a uh, equipment on the map that constantly reduces my shield and the effect gets stronger every few seconds. Normally I have 1500, now it's down to 900. Kind of need to play fast, so we don't take unnecessary damage. Where's the stupid shield shit? Oh, it's even deeper in. Annoying. It's not worth diving for it. Too, em too many enemies and you get shot from all directions and die. The there is a quasi that can dive for it just fine, but he doesn't have a shield. So it doesn't matter to the debuff doesn't matter to him. Avoid most of the enemies, wanna go kill the stupid shield. Ah, so far away. Okay, group everything. Can at least kill most of here in one swing. This thing loses its shields after it fires for a bit. And then you can kill it quickly. Because the shield is actually most of itself. Dashing back, so they all group up and I can knife them. Ow. Asshole spawning behind me. This should be the final spawn. Yep, very tanky and healed. So the terror enemies are all in front of me now. That's the only one that actually does damage here. Also this one. Fuck. We'll ignore those for a bit. They're slow. Let's go and kill the stupid shield reduction. I basically have no shield at this point. Annoying robot. Fire all of your shots, please. Never mind. Okay, it's this thing. Fucking finally. And on top of everything, the goddamn thing is tanky. Okay, now I have a normal shield. Now if it can only regenerate, that would be wonderful. Life steal. Kind of need that right now. It also increases the power of any debuffs, like bleeding from this thing. But the life steal is what I care about. Because I need my health back. Uh, the Berserk item isn't in the game. Also, that's kind of an awful item anyway <laughs> in the first game. The only thing you want from it is to sell it for the life steal. 
big heavy rifle uh, does nothing for me. When you get 25 of these, you get some random weapon. At 50, the knife stacks start regenerating normally. Oh, there's an item we forgot. Let's go back. Give me the white plating stuff that keeps me alive. Let's just activate it manually once, so we have it right now. What were the weapons here? I forgot to check. This is my favorite sniper weapon, by the way. Because it can headshot. And anytime you headshot something with the sniper, you reload the bullet back into the weapon. It's very balanced. Nothing interesting for uh, Raider, though. Honestly, I don't care too much about what weapon I'm using with Raider. Because I just want to go and stop people. Instant death turrets. Two of them. That room's a death trap. Kite the mobs out. Most of them don't follow. Okay, we're gonna have to run into one of these. Okay. Now it's better. We have space to work with. Kill this thing, because it does a lot of damage. If they get into melee with me, they can't do much, because I just unlock them with a the shotgun. Or, you know, one-shot them. Explosive Varro. Kind of a throw place for it. Hooray, we leave. I haven't seen the no-scope sniper. We do have the Nemesis, though. Both of these are useless for the knife, because it has no cooldown. Permanently increasing the power on kill, of course. Heal whenever I kill something with the knife. Good enough for the first job. We do have a version of the M75. Not quite as overpowered though. Instead it's a radioactive sniper. That you can't fire while moving. It's actually one of my favorite sniper in the game. Even though it's one of the weaker ones. Of course I've played Heroes 3. I am a swab after all. <laughs> Give me money anytime I dash into stuff. I dash into stuff all the time. Easy choice. Let's go farm money to get the money printer. This stuff regenerates shields. Very helpful. The white shield means it's invincible. When it gets spikes, it damage reflects. The damage effect isn't much. As long as you don't apply a dot to it or something. If you apply a dot to it, it can kill you. Grab the chest and run away. This doesn't matter, this doesn't matter. We'll grab the upgrade. We have crit damage or movement speed. Oh no, this is a different one. Item cooldowns are reduced on kills. I don't really have anything where I care about. Also, this wasn't an automated activation. It drops lightning when I get close to it. We'll take the pure damage. Damage is always reliable. My laptop still isn't on fire. So, in terms of my computer's performance, this went better than I expected. Dogs of death, run away. 
Hier de doggos. Auw. This thing there continuously summons the drones. If you leave it alone, it can summon a hundred drones and foot them up with them. Which isn't a big deal because they're very fragile. But if you just walk into them without paying attention, they will insta kill you. Because their damage is stupidly high. For reference, I'm playing with a laptop. It has about 16 gigabytes of RAM. And just barely managing to stream it. The first game is a lot lighter if you want something similar. Oh yeah, those things explode. This thing is actually super dangerous. When it goes to half health, it makes a, a big bubble that makes everything around it invincible. You can kind of abuse it for yourself if you're in it. Which I was not. Run away from the dogs. Uh, good question. Some Lenovo laptop for about a thousand dollars. Yeah, I don't think you can run this. Uh, this game eats a colossal amount of RAM. More than anything else they have, actually. We have the shield dom item again. Which is great, and normally I'd get it, but we are streaming. Let's try a different set of items. Oh shit, I failed to kill the dog. Run away! I mostly use the damage reflex skill to wait for my dashes to come off cooldown. Bait the drones a bit closer. Uh, yeah, it should be in a bit less than two hours. Apparently. I assume somebody will tell me if it starts earlier. After I get 50 dog stacks, the knife starts regenerating stacks on its own. And then it becomes way more consistent. So this guy has a somewhat weaker early game than the Chrono. But, after, but he scales faster and then starts one-shotting everything much easier later. I don't need to kill them with the knife to gain the damage scaling, by the way. Just need to be in melee. Do we have the survival? We do. This gives you a hard fight, but then you get a unique upgrade that you can't get anywhere else. With some kind of demerit for all of them. Movement speed, armor, healing gain, or health. I will take the high health. This class is the fastest in the game to begin with. Let's do the fight. Oh, and we need to run to the other end of the map afterwards. It's three waves. First it summons a few basic enemies, then a wave of drones, and then a few elite enemies. You can kind of spawn queue everything, so it's not really difficult. As long as there's nothing else going on. What's particularly overpowered about this in multiplayer is that every single player can use it individually, but everyone gets the upgrade. And the upgrades from this thing are stronger than most of the upgrades in the game. You will see them in a bit. Drone wave is complete, and now the last wave. 
main difference is that these guys are very tanky. But this pump is... But this shotgun is very imbo. Okay. So this is the only one that doesn't have any downside. You gain 50% extra shot chance. This makes you fire faster, but it's less accurate. And this increases the crit damage, but the weapon overheats faster. We'll take this, we don't care about the overheat. We couldn't overheat this thing if we tried. We need to run to the other end of the map. Because there's an upgrade we forgot. I haven't played Fury, by the way. I know of it. In the same way. Maybe that's something I should play. Hooray! Pink laser. No idea why it became pink. I'll take it though. Opposite of green, so it's automatically a good cover. Yeah, I, I have listened to the soundtrack of Fury. I even used it in a few videos. I really like it. I just haven't tried the game itself. I know it's some kind of bullet hell thing. That I'd probably enjoy. But there's a lot of good games out there. So I've never gotten to it. Also, I probably play too much synthetic. Whack. Run away. And chew while the shield regenerates. Ow. Squash damage hit me. Kind of pinned down here. Not ideal. This guy one shot, so I wanna dive him. Or not bother coming out. Oh, it doesn't one shot, but he can do 3-4 thousand damage pretty easily. So I generally don't fuck around with these guys. This shotgun in particular is insanely strong. It feels like a boring starter weapon. But when you actually get later into the game, it's just insane. It demolishes everything. Because this applies 8 times, the damage it actually does is way harder than you'd expect. The most throw character. You mean for team killing or for what? Yeah, demolition. Demolition is much better in the first game, by the way. Because at least when your teammate is playing demolition, you can force them to take a skill that gives you shields when they hit you with an explosion. No such uh, luck in the second game. Uh, the game is synthetic too. Knife still can't punch shot shit. We're still in the early game for Raider. Increases all of the power of the weapons. This is a bit complicated to explain. So this is the weapon variant, which is some unique buff that it gets. There are several different variants for every weapon. Some are better than others, etc, etc. The starting weapons don't have any. If you use variant overdrive on them, you will gain a unique starting buff on that weapon. Yeah, Hades is also fun. That's a much more story focused though. We'll take this, which increases everything here by 40%. More damage, more damage, more lifesteal, more crit chance and crit damage. Ow. I got smacked by these guys. I haven't played Raider in a while. Not my best class, honestly. My best one is probably Breacher. But they haven't gotten to play that one yet. I might die here. Okay, we get out.
At least the one I have did good did good work for me. Run away. Wait for shields to regenerate. And dash into these guys. Hooray, damage. Wait for the dash. No, no, Breacher is a tanky short range demolitionist. If you love shotguns, he is definitely my most played class in the game. Let's get rid of this trash and get some real item. Uh, this is okay, I guess. How's the knife power going? 200%, not bad. Need a little more. The sixth level, which is this one, has a guaranteed upgrade shop. Yep, shit. So we can upgrade the knife even more. Oh, perfect. You might remember this from the Chrono Run. 50% damage boost when you use it. The crit chance is also good. Now we'll take the damage boost. I think I can't upgrade it anymore, so we'll upgrade the dash a bit too. Extra charge on the dash, perfect. And this isn't worth upgrading. I have life steel to sustain me. Woohoo! So many drones. Also, I need to run away. Preferably now. So many drones. <laughs> okay, let's chew a bit until we get our cooldowns back. And just attack from a distance. That's an excellent question. I have no idea. Ow. Okay. <laughs> I hate the lightning guys. They slow you too, so they set you up for something else to kill you. It would do a bit more damage if I get closer. Okay, upgrading the dash. Chance to not use it. Very nice. And this is one of the core bosses in the game. Why am I only fighting planes this run? <laughs> There's other bosses in this game. The tank planes. But yeah, the boss you get is based on the map set you get. This is the laser cannon boss with homing attacks. So it's kind of similar to the airplane from earlier, but much deadlier. It also summons trash mobs. By the way, for both the first plane and this one, I can actually hit them in the with the knife. If they get in range, it's possible. I'd rather kill the trash mobs so they don't overwhelm me, but if I need to. Or if I get the chance, rather, I can stab it. The stupid plane is circling around the arena and firing homing missiles at me. Ow. I missed it. Run away for now and wait for no chance. Uh, I'm playing at fairly low graphics, by the way. The game can look better than this. I just kind of have to lower it. I'm also playing at 30, fr uh, the 30 FPS. Normally I play on 60, but I have to lower it so I can get the game to work uh, for the stream. Hooray, we didn't die. I like this boss, but it's really scary. Any pickups increase the power of the knife. Or we gain power naturally every 5 seconds. I'll take this because the knife already does that. 
so it charges back even fa faster now. Personally, I prefer Synthetic 2 start style, but I can definitely I definitely know the charm of Synthetic ones too. They're both cool to me. This item has been carrying me so hard. It's my ranged attack. Wanna kite everything to me, because if I dash into them and I, they start firing at me from all directions while kiting me, I'll get wrecked. Okay, we killed the tanky drone. Lasers are weak against shields, but do bonus damage to health, by the way. Different ammos are good or bad against different stuff. There's one ammo type that completely melts plating, for example, and ignores armor completely. Hello. Weapon shop? Ew, another fun shotgun. I don't really need another weapon. I'm fine with the police breaching. I just like this shotgun. It's the burst rifle. First shot is grouped and we gain a bunch of extra armor. And the shotgun has infinity attack speed. Nothing too interesting for passives. More scrap to be fired. There's upgrades that can completely change the weapon type from a semi to auto or vice versa. More damage. Grit is fine. We have the good one, yeah. Armor penetration, damage against armor, and weapon damage. So this makes its damage stupidly high. And it's good against armor. So this one sucks a bit against armor. This one will cover for it. There was one enemy around here, right? Where did they go? I lost them completely. Hmm, actually I like this item. It summons a shield a guy to protect me, basically. To remove this. Can drop it in melee to tank for me. We'll go to the sides first. This is like the center of the map. Downside of this weapon is that it reloads very slowly. More reload speed for this one. Uh, nothing too useful. I'll stick with what they have. Pull them here, have the shield guard tank a bit. See if they can group out and I can dive them. That's interesting. Not sure why I could use it three times in a row. Not that I'm complaining. These guys are tanky and give me a. or should give me an aura that gives me armor. They also slow enemies around them. There was a patch where they slowed you, so if you summon two of them and you stand, stood like this in their hours, you couldn't move at all. We're about to have a clusterfuck. Time to run away. Knife is on cooldown, so I can't dive yet. The death cars, yeah, they're dead. Those things can kill you in about half a second. Wait for the other guy to get into range. Good enough. You can reload, even though you can shoot while you're using the damage effect skill.
Uh, there's no story, not really, so you can play either one. I can't really say I'd recommend one over the other. They're different and I like both of them. I think the first one was a bit cheaper though. So on that basis you can start with that one. But I couldn't say something like Synthetic 2 is an evolution of the first game. Mostly because I'm not a game reviewer. Uh, but more importantly they just have very different game styles. You don't really have abilities in the same way uh, in the first game. You have items. For example the knife is an item. The quartz that has it you can just throw it on the ground or never use it or sell it. If you want, like, in terms of personal taste, I like the second one better, but they're both good. Which one you like is just a question of preference. We're gonna get a game crash. Hooray, it didn't crash. Computer is getting tired. Do we have enough money to upgrade the knife? Oh, even more. Stacking power. We're going to make it broken soon. Which isn't good considering we're heading into the last level of the game, but... Details. Avoid the center, like the plague on this level. This is where we died with Kron instantly. And go down towards the edges. Edges are safer. Because you can group the enemies so they all come from one side. If they all start jumping you all at once, like they're doing anyway, the assholes, it gets very dangerous. Less the plating. There's a death car here. Oh, I was walking with the Dominator. Didn't notice. Well, that's fine. This weapon has a bit of a shorter range. The square things teleport if you shoot them. And they explode in you. Pretty deadly. Best possible upgrade here. 20% power and critical chance for melee attacks. A melee attack. The power is whatever, but we want to get the knife at 100% crit chance. Do we have plating already? No, we don't. So this will give me plating and I can sell this item. Extra health, dodge or more crit. I'll take the plating first. Plating keeps you alive. Do we count both Synthetic 1 and 2? Because then it's definitely the Transporter boss. The Woodbox boss is just too good from the first game. You have to admit. If it's just the second game, then it's the plane we just fought. Yeah, they're kind of like... Plating is like Mudrock Shields, but they absorb only a thousand damage. And, as you can probably tell from how I died with Chrono, a thousand health is not a lot. There's weapon chests, but I don't care about weapons. Anytime you shoot it, it teleports. Very goofy with when machine guns get involved. It shot itself by hitting this wall. The knife has slightly bigger AOE than the Chrono. And it's not really behind the damage. That other side, the lasers are still scary though. Run away. More terror waves. Kill whatever this thing is directly.
And now we're just waiting for where the death cards will spawn. Because they can truly one-shot everything. Okay. So this is the wave that spawns the death cards. Here they are. Deleted instantly. They are fragile, so they might not look like much when I just kill them. But their damage is higher than anything else in the game. It's higher than every boss in the game. If you let them shoot at you, you're dead. That's why I'm so... Play so carefully when they're coming. This is a shop that lets me upgrade items. Nothing I wanna upgrade. I'll save my money because the next level has a guaranteed shop. That lets me upgrade skills. Ah, I don't have any upgrade kits, and I'm not throwing any of the fine shotguns I have. Let's go to the final level. Well, the final non-boss level. As my friend described it, everything is red! Well, you can tell it's a car, but you are dead two seconds later. That part is accurate. This is just a big machine gun. It shoots flag though. If you're wondering why it has a dot, uh, this shotgun can set stuff on fire. It rarely matters because the shotgun's damage is ridiculous. And tends to body stuff. When these guys get shot, they become invincible. And they can teleport around and fire bullets that ignore all armor. They're one of the less dangerous enemies here. Because they're easy to dodge. These guys just teleport and do damage. The yeah, air we can hit you through the, through the wall. Turrets on the ground, so I can just stab them with a knife. Two more turrets on the other side. We don't really need to kill them. But this is one of the those games where I just like killing every enemy. The Seth summon is strong in both games. Uh, it, in the second game it's a quas kill. The quas code the eliminator has it. The suitcase sentry. One of the invincible guys. Pull them early. Hide. Shoot. Kill the stupid artillery first. Oh, that guy's alive. Whoa. Yeah. I don't have the best skills to do high critical damage, because my crit chance is low, and my crit damage also isn't high. But it is consistent and easy to apply. I like synthetic 2 more. But I can't really say it's better. It's a purely personal preference. If somebody tells me they like synthetic 1 more, I 100% understand. More money, luck or crit damage. We'll take crit damage, because once we whoop the game, which is about to happen, and I'll show it off for a bit, we will start to have reduced crit damage. I used to prefer a uh, synthetic one style more, when the game was more into early access, purely for visual clarity reasons, because it was easier to read what the hell was going on. Uh, after a while, as the style and graphics improved, I became more of a fan of Synthetic 2 style. The 
the tanks from Synthetic One. Uh, they are here to be a DPS check as always. See if you can one shot them. I can't really tell if one is more or less fair to the player. I've played both of them way too much and I can consistently beat them with whatever. Oh, I can't upgrade my knife anymore. My life is ruined. Uh, let's start upgrading the summon. When I summon it, it gives me shields. Very nice. Since its entire job is to keep me alive. Make it super tanky or more power. Not sure what power on summon does, but screw it. Let's take it. Oops, I hold the shotgun first. And on to the final boss. It's the first one from the first game. With some different skill sets. Oops, I skipped the cutscene, sorry. Force of habit. When you shoot it, it becomes invincible. And it fires a bunch of homing missiles at you. These things do a lot of damage. And now it's become vulnerable. Sadly, it's just out of reach and I can't stab it with a knife. The invincibility skill has a cooldown and occasionally it summons trash mobs to annoy you. Much like the first game, this fight is impossible to lose with Raider because you can dodge, dodge around effortlessly. How much power do we have on the knife? 400%. Very nice. And it will keep scaling forever. You can get better graphics. I have uh, really fucked up settings. On post-processing this shit. The resolution isn't that high. FPS isn't 30. Like I'm making a lot of concessions so I can stream it. You can make it look a lot better. Yeah, yeah, this fight is unlosable with Raider. It's very annoying for some classes that can't dodge around easily and don't have iframes. But this one has both. Okay, when you beat the game, you get a uh, debuff. You gain less ammo, less healing, less healing regeneration, critical damage, dot chance, and you lose max health and shield per every stage. And you basically get new game plus. Enemies are faster, do more damage. The usual stuff. Well, I guess they don't make enemies faster in most games. They also give them more ammo, so the shotgun guys can become fully automatic if you loop a couple of times. Because they also gain more attack speed. Uh, what did we forget? Yeah, it's the same as the first game. When they were releasing the early access, I know they intended to make other factions too. And this was supposed to be just one of them. I'm not sure if that's still going through, but I assume we'll have way more bosses. If that's what they're going for eventually. The death wave is here. But every other enemy isn't a chrono trooper. So they're not scary. Even if we still have the death cars. Where's the other death car? I only saw one. Okay, there it is. So avoid that thing for now. Uh, where, where the fuck did the car go? Oh. Do I lose health or do I still have enough healing gain? Okay, so if I try to heal myself here, I start losing health. This is because of the debuff. Because I'm playing reduced healing gain, reduced regeneration. I think I already have a reduced healing gain from the difficulty I'm playing at. So when I try to heal myself, I actually start losing health. It can be fixed if you get uh, healing gain upgrades from chests. 
But there's no point because I have lifesteal and lifesteal isn't affected by healing gain. Might have missed something there, checking that corner. Nice Kumus reference. Yeah, it's full of goofy interactions like this. Oh yeah, I, I almost forgot and killed myself, fuck. <laughs> I have to explain that one too. Uh, so, you know how it, I have 50% reduced dot chance? Guess what my second skill that made me invincible before gave me? He just gave me 100% dodge. Oh, I dashed into the bullet. So when I use it now, I'm not invincible. <laughs> I forgot about it, because they added the uh, reduced dodge chance recently. Well, good time to die. Time to play a different class. We have time for about one more full run. Okay, uh, what class do you want to see? Shotgun guy. Immortal. Heavy, heavy gunner. Also the worst class in the game at the moment. Uh, different sniper that has a tank with him. Don't ask about the tank. And this guy is very weird. I, I don't want to explain him. One vote for shield guy. Who is actually just immortal. I'm 100% serious. Okay, heavy gunner or shield guy? Revolver guy? I mean, I guess this guy has a revolver. Why do I not have that unlocked? The fuck? Okay. Okay, we'll start with the shield guard. I can't actually die with him, so we'll see what we'll, where we'll go from there. Uh, the red guard is mostly the same as the first game. You even have his battle cry. But instead of the shield being tied to a weapon you start with, you just have the shield as its own skill. He is also functionally immortal. Uh, same. The way he works at the moment, which is super broken and the 100% change, is that any time an enemy dies close to him, he gains health regeneration. But the current range in which he gains health regeneration is insanely large. So it basically makes him unkillable. He also has a 100 armor. So most normal enemies just don't do any real damage to him. He does damage when he dashes, he does damage when you right click, he does damage when he farts. Also, this pistol sucks us. <laughs> if you take off the shield, you walk slower. If you put it back, you walk faster. There's a buff when you take it on and off that gives you movement speed. I think it also had activated some other condition, like killing enemies. I'm not kidding about this guy being immortal, though. He has a skill that gives him 50% damage reduction. It's possible to upgrade it to 100% damage reduction. I don't even bother it upgrading it most of the time. Because I barely need to use the skill. Unless I'm trolling. You just dash into enemies and kill them. Like, with other classes you dash around, try to dodge it. With this guy you walk into stuff. Yes, they're doing damage to me. Let me press one button and stop that. And look at that health regeneration. This is without the 100% armor. He also takes reduced health damage. Okay, I should probably kill this guy. Uh, can we see it from here? Anyway, uh, his health also takes reduced health damage and he has more health than anything else. His downside is that he has no shield at all. You can get one though. Also, he can start with a healing gun that does this. What damage? Uh, death cars can kill the shield, yeah. They are the death cars for a reason. If you use this skill, they can't because you can gain a 100% damage reduction. But never fuck with the death cars. You mean hyper lethality? Yeah, I liked it too. 
it was the most fun to do it 220%. I won't I wish they added more modes in synthetic too. Oh, this class is so broken. Does he still gain max health every level? Or did they remove that? He does bonus damage to stun, blah 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 blah. Gain a hundred maximum health per area, halved after ten areas. Yeah, so every time you complete the level he gains max health too. I think the rockets can Ah never mind, they don't do shit. The thing is when I start killing stuff, they start healing me. You can see this that's above the stacks. He used to be much more mortal, but still overpowered, because the range to proc this was much smaller. Now it's absolutely massive. So his healing is just through the roof. I didn't use any healing skill, I just entered the fight and left it full health. Some other goofy mechanics I should explain after I kill these things, because they can actually do damage to me. It killed itself with its own artillery. Whoa. So, when playing on max difficulty, anytime you take health damage, you lose 10 max health. That's why I started with 4000 and went down to like 3500. But this only has 100 stacks, so when I lose 1000 max health, I stop losing max health entirely. Meanwhile, I keep gaining max health forever. There are skills in this game that increase your max health by a percentage. And when you get it on this guy, he just becomes unkillable. With any other class, this is scary. With this one, we just keep walking forward. Because his low health is three times as tanky as any other class. Obviously, you can play it much cleaner so you don't get hit. But there's basically no need. Oh, death dogs. Yeah, dogs can kill me. I need to screw around with them, but they can do damage to me. Hmm. The revolver isn't terrible. Haven't used it before. I like how the guy with the stick fired the missile at me. Oops, dog. Did I just run out of bullets in a revolver? Do, 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 do. Oh, you think you can damage me? Okay. What now? The most throw thing about this healing weapon is that it actually doesn't heal for almost anything. It just heals the riot guard for a lot because he has something like 200% increased healing. If anyone else gets killed by it, they gain like a 200 health. It's the ultimate throw heal that's only good for yourself. I love it. Oh yeah, this guy is uh, quartz, because dogs can uh, kill him. But nothing else can kill him, so I guess he's more like harder than... Oops, wrong skill. The poor snipers. I don't play this guy much, to be honest. Because when you know what you're doing in this game, you kind of just you can kind of just walk into stuff and kill them. And they can't stop you in any way. But he's definitely fun and helpful for learning the game when you're new. Better gun for me. Wish I got this at the chrono. He has some terrific buffs for it. This is a really broken item that's useless for me. Useless, useless. Increases max shield, restores your shields when it depletes. It's insanely good. On to the next level. You don't even care about the weapon on this guy. You just want to gain one upgrade that gives you life steal. Because if you have lifesteal, this this because it looks cool, fast flying bullets, yay. If you have lifesteal, it becomes absolutely impossible for anything to kill you. Because you lifesteal off ability damage too. The worst thing about Synthetic 2 is that it doesn't have the Mach 42. 
I like how it was pinpoint perfect accurate on the first shot, so you can use it as a sniper. Uh, the bosses are the easy part. The normal enemies have a much better chance at killing you than bosses in this game. Reload. <laughs> now, normally when you have a tank class, they tank well early and then become worse. That's not how this guy works. It's only possible to kill him in the early game. The longer this goes on, the more and more unkillable he becomes. Permanently increases all item power. This is actually great because it stacks multiplicatively. This is extra armor, but it's useless on this class because 100 is effectively the maximum armor you can have. And dodge is boring. Dodge is for people who die when they're killed. Let's have another wave. Normally I wait out the waves so I don't group them with other enemy waves, but we're playing Riot Guard so it doesn't matter. Let's just walk into everything. See if they can kill me. Maybe there's enough enemies where I actually have to try in the fight. Kind of doubt it though. Stay still, please. Michael Myers, is, yeah, that's exactly what this guy is. He only needs his own team song. But the green guy is the one with the knife, though. So I'm not sure how that matches. Yes, come into the laser. Oh, they're not going into the AoE. The AI isn't brain dead like in the first game. Whoa. I have a friend who plays this guy a fair bit and anytime he manages to die with him I make fun of him. Because I'm not sure how that's even possible. Yeah, go go get quartz loot. IS4 isn't hard enough. Make it harder. I approve. She's also not terrible in IS4. Uh, the basic enemy is record though. And the casters have too high DPS for her. Not sure exactly what she is useful for when I think about it. So maybe that not terrible thing is a lie. Nah, Scratch that is definitely a lie. <laughs> a quartz soul for DOS. So I deploy quartz, the boss, the boss puts her in a coffin and then the map ends. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we got an enemy that can damage me. Finally. Hit me! Yay, damage! I actually have to dodge things. Or, you know, I could just kill myself. This class is balanced. Um, crit damage, or rather crit chance, or summoning a tractor. I believe in the almighty tractor. Come to me, Tractor. Why was it summoned with the bark? Questions for later. Yeah, Leon, that's exactly what I ask him every time he dies with it. <laughs> How is that possible? Okay, so when we dash, everything gets stunned, and the dash has a shorter cooldown. Yeah, but his health hyperscales forever. He gains more max health every time you go to the next level. 
and he gains. Uh, you can gain max health from other sources. This fight is really funny, because normally the problem is being overwhelmed by the little shits. But every time a little shit dies, they will heal me for more damage than they would do to me. I just cast them automatically, because I'm lazy. Also, holy shit, that cryo beam does a lot of damage. Sitting under the boss. Mm -hmm. Don't do this with other classes, it's unhealthy. Let's go stack some health regeneration. Oh, I'm missing him because I'm exactly under him. Whoa. Damage is real. Bless the tractor. This is the most broken skill you can get from a boss in the game. It just does uh, an absurd amount of damage. This also does an absurd amount of damage, but less than this one. Okay, we have a phase where enemies actually do real damage to us. I have to play slightly seriously now. The dog is a beast like always. Good job, dog. Oh no! Our shields are being reduced. The sniper is actually one of the stronger classes in the game. I, the only reason I died is because I was explaining shit with him. He is fragile, but he becomes super tanky. Uh, and he can kite everything forever. You need to play him correctly, but he is insanely strong. He's simple, but he's not weak. Nah, but the boss attacks are easy to dodge. The dogs are harder to dodge when they get on top of you. Wait, I'm hiding behind stuff again. Oops. I focused on chat too much. I wouldn't say that Synthetic 2 is better than Synthetic 1. You kind of have to try them both and see for yourself which one you prefer. I prefer Synthetic 2. But I like both of them. They're slightly different games and both are kind of worth playing. So you kind of have to play them both and decide for yourself which one is better for you. I assume the Riot Guard will get nerfed at some point, but that hasn't happened yet. Actually, I just focused on one of them because they keep regenerating their shields. Oh my god. Get healed. Oh, you actually did. Whoa. What was the chest? Oh yeah, a cursed weapon. Oh, I have upgrade kits. I didn't notice. Okay, let's make a hard fight. This will curse me and reduce my max health and give me the most broken weapon in the game. Whoa. Until I kill 24 enemies, my max health will be very reduced. Let's see if they can kill me now. Also, I summon the second terror wave on top of the first one, so we can have a bit of a clusterfuck. Incidentally, this is actually just the most broken rope in the game. It's not because it does a lot of damage, although it kind of does. It has ridiculous range in that way. So you can kind of just go to the other end of the map and shoot at stuff. <laughs> 14 kills until I'm not cursed. Does this thing have burst? Apparently.
so much for the double wave. Okay, let's see if we can get this weapon set up. Because it's awesome. Uh, oh, this is the only good thing. Every 5 shots or so, uh, it does 60% damage. If you switch weapons, it instantly gains the bonus damage. Really good for weapons you wanna fire once and then switch off. Extra shot chance or crit damage. Let's go with crit. Because it buffs my dash damage too. The blessed upgrade. This is the most broken upgrade in the game, and I have no idea why it isn't nerfed. It increases fire weight, increases weapon damage, massively lowers the heating of the weapon, because that's how it works when you increase the attack speed, increases your magazine size, and it makes the weapon be a burst fire. That's the stuff. Next upgrade. Oh, we need one more. I really need to get some movement speed buffs, though. Also, you barely take any health damage when you overheat, so I really don't care if I overheat while playing Riot Guard. It's not a big deal. I'll take some minor health damage. No, no ammo. A tragedy. Yeah, the only thing I really want is the life steal upgrade, but I can't get it in this weapon now. Which is fine. I normally don't bother using this weapon, because it becomes so overpowered when you can fire it consistently. We'll find out what I get tomorrow in IS4. And the rockets penetrate on top of everything else. This weapon is so dumb. Comedically unbalanced. Also, the, rec the rockets can headshot. Because, of course, they can. Wait for the shield. Boop. We don't have the, the Guren Wagon sniper. Actually, we kind of do. I guess the, the KSVK is very close to the Guren Wagon sniper. It's an AoE sniper that applies radiation damage. And you can't fire it while moving. It's very close to it in terms of gameplay. Big turret. Whoa. <laughs> How did I miss that? Great item. A chance for everything to double cast. Yeah, I've cleansed the cursed. Back to full health. Upgrade dash more. Chance to not consume. If you upgrade this a bit to 300% power, you gain a 100% damage reduction. But I never bother doing it. I rather just upgrade my other skills. If you play Synthetic 2 uh, and see the KSVK sniper, uh, try it. It's very similar to the Yokua gun from the first game in terms of feel. It's kind of less dog shit, <laughs> so I appreciate that <laughs> when actually using it. I need to increase the ammo capacity or gain some ammo regeneration. Then we can really show off what this weapon can do. I get two curses and 50% currency gain. These curses cannot be dispelled the normal way. Protection fee is reduced health damage, but I lose money. I'll take protection fee because I already have reduced health damage. More reduced health damage is very good on my class. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to reward this thing. I assume they're going to nerf him at some point, but he's been like this for a couple of patches now, <laughs> so now I'm not sure. You can get shields from here if you put them on. The only thing I ever get on the Rad Guard is more health though. If I don't have uh, 15,000 health by the time I whoop, I'm disappointed. Mm. 
Keep marching forward. By the way, this weapon seems overpowered now, but the blue shop upgrade has an upgrade that gives you different ammo types. If you get the right ammo type, you can do 2000 damage per rocket with nothing else. Do -do -do. What do we have here? Survival or cleanse. I want survival because there's an upgrade that gives me bonus damage to stunt, and I want that one. Hooray! The electric bows can do damage to me if I walk into literally all of them. Oh, more importantly, final upgrade on this thing. Faster reward speed and ammo regeneration. Even more weapon damage and attack speed. This sounds fine because I can get uh, the ammo fixed from other places. This is trash. Doesn't do anything for me. 50% ammo regeneration, but it doesn't give me ammo regen in and of itself. It just helps me reload more. Okay, so I'll just take even more damage on it. And then gain extra damage from somewhere else. Sorry, reload speed and ammo capacity. We'll just stack pure damage on this. So do we have the new mode open now or is it coming in 8 o'clock in 50 minutes? Well, I don't reduce enemy health though. Or their damage. The old speed or ammo capacity is what they want the most. All three of these items are super broken for me. This does lightning damage, which this skill over here also does. If they both proc at once, it does even more damage. It's a shovel, you hit people with it. And this disables the attack of everything. I'll take the jammer, I like it too much. And we'll get that upgrade I mentioned. So, this summons drones to protect me. More importantly, I take reduced health damage. And since the only thing the Riot Guard has is health... He becomes rather difficult to kill. We'll summon the innocents that we need to slaughter for the upgrade. Yeah, the shovel is actually a pretty decent item on melee heroes. But you just literally hit people with it, that's it. <laughs> it just does a lot of damage. Should probably walk with shield on. Because otherwise you don't have armor. I don't want to shoot you. Thank you. Can I delete the drone wave with the jammer? Nah, not enough damage yet. I managed to miss all four shots with Atwe an Atwe weapon. Now that's a real skill issue. You can only buy one item from the shop. Unless it bugs and then you can buy more. Final one. And we need to kill the summon. 
because we're not out of combat until this thing is dead. Damn, all of us. <laughs> Good thing it's bleeding out. Okay, that should be it. Or is it glitching out? Yeah, there we go. Okay, I got the one I wanted. Movement speed and damage to stun with the downside of reduced shield regeneration. Yeah, how awful for me. It's synthetic too. Ah uh, yeah, the shop bugs out something, but sometimes there was a bug where the shop didn't get, didn't charge you, and that was an explicit feature where where it told you in the first game. So maybe it's intentional. Who knows? The tractor was sacrificed for the greater good. Charge! The revolver is completely relevant to the damage I'm doing. I promise. Is this revenge for the tractor or revenge of the tractor? Upgrade the grenade launcher more. I wanna make something stupid out of this weapon. Uh, let's start with ammo capacity. Because the way it only fires one bullet is annoying me. Apparently that weapon lowers my movement speed. Never noticed before. This is without my shield, by the way. That's why I'm taking damage. 100 armor, let's go. I know, right? It's so hard to play Riot Guard. This is why I make fun of my friend when he dies with this class. It's actually just impossible. No hands. Can we get lifesteal on the gun so I can go for AFK? No lifesteal. No lifesteal, I don't care about the other ones. Oh, okay, maybe we can do it. So, this increases the reward speed and also gives another ammo type. Let's see if we get the right ammo type. Yep, we did. Uh, basically the same thing, but higher crit chance and higher damage. Let's go smack something with the bigger missiles. Oh, they're faster too. Nice. We don't have the Armageddon room yet. Sadly. Tragically. Uh, let's get rid of the cryobeam. So now people explode. <laughs> the knockback. We're close to building something stupid. I need more power. Upgrade the car. Yeah, this is the you want to win the game class. This is a boss, by the way. Though, this isn't an example of how overpowered this class is. This is just the easiest boss in the game. It just reduces. Dash is even more overpowered, or something that doesn't buff my dash. Buff the dash, always the dash. You win by dashing into stuff.
Uh, I have a bill of 300 credits every stage. If I don't pay it, they send friendly drones to kill me. Friendly me. Not sure why they're not, why they're not showing up though. They kind of just forgot, I guess. This is a perfectly balanced weapon. And we still don't have it operational. Multi burst wasn't worth on this. Can't support as well. Hooray, wave! Also, because of the skill I got by killing the boss, the dash now does a stupid amount of damage. Car! Aha! Uh -huh. Friendly drones that shoot you with friendliness missiles. They will also spawn if I lose enough health. Let's see if I can proc it just to show them off. Hit me more, you assholes. Is this slow enough? Stop shooting at me. I don't see the drones. Yay! Finally I proc them. You have to lose 1 million health for them to spawn. At topic, where are the drones? Still haven't seen them. Oh, has this kill bugged out? That's a pity. No drones. Well, I guess the death cars can't really kill the riot guard, because they were shooting at me all day. I was kind of cheating by using this kill to try and summon the drones. Maybe they're salty, I didn't pay my protection fees. <laughs> so they didn't come. By the way, streaming aside, I'm kind of bored of this class, uh, because he's easy. Do you want me to finish the run or uh, switch to a different class for the last 40 minutes before DOS starts? There's about 3 stages left in the run. Suit yourselves. So what I want, switch to the worst class. Meme class in terms of funny or bad? Because I definitely have a bad class for you if you want that. Okay, I'll finish this level and uh, s switch to Heavy Gunner. Okay, one of my favorite items. Goodbye, cars. Hello, drone swarm. Why the fuck did it only summon three? What the fuck? Normally it summons six. Did you nerve this? Understandable if they did, but I want more drones. Okay, level finished. Let's switch to heavy gunner. <laughs> it won't the next level after it pressed the quit button. It can't decide what it wants to do now. <laughs> yeah, it used to be 6. You can make it summon like 30 drones with upgrades. <laughs> I haven't done this one before. It's because I quit out as the teleport was happening. Paying a protection fee for quitting sounds like a real insurance company. I assume it's going to bug out, so I'll just close the game and open it again. It won't take long. Bless the SSD. <laughs> that was a new one. I haven't seen it. Um, not sure.
We'll have a look at all of the stages. I won't do S1. But I guess I'll just explain the boss mechanics, check out what the other event gimmick was, and then I'll finish up the stream. I'm definitely satisfied with streaming synthetic all day in any case. That's been fun for me. Oops, we clicked on the mods. Leaving that stuff aside. Okay, so these three are probably the weaker classes of the game. And this one is, is probably the worst. He has two possible builds. With this he gains a shield when he loses his shield. Hi Dreos. Nah, it's just black screen because I closed the game for bugginess. This makes him tankier. This makes him do less damage, but he has a chance to not use bullets. I'll go with this because it's more fun. He can summon boxes to tank, or he can make himself invincible for these seconds. This is probably the better one, but this is funnier, so we'll go with that. And let's start. It's not his end, I closed the it's because I closed the game. <laughs> he is not a tank at all. Uh, he's supposed to be like uh, heavy fire support. He's just tasted it. Wait, shit, I almost died. <laughs> I forgot the pistol has to reload constantly. Wait, I fucked it up. Let me reset. His uh, weapon cannot gain extra ammo. Uh, it only has the ammo that he starts with. I, I emptied it on accident and then he had no bullets. This is definitely the meme bat class. Ah, the poor guy. He was probably one of the stronger classes in the game in the first game. It's the combination of being kind of slow and not doing that much damage without a good gun. Okay, let me play seriously with him, because he's actually hard. Well, not that hard. These boxes give me shields, attack speed, and they restore my shields afterwards. The skill that makes him invincible is way, way better, but the boxes are just funny. Because enemies... sometimes they can break enemy puffing. Yeah. Uh, that's what a friend of mine that I play it often with also says, that it's like Hotline Miami. One of his skills upgrades the first weapon he gets, but the upgrade is very minimal. 50 flat attack speed on a weapon that has 800 by default, and 2 extra ammo. That aside, this is actually a pretty decent weapon. Not sure how much the heavy gunner can do with it, because it's makes it inaccurate as fuck. That will manage. Even more bullets, sure. Something I like about this guy is that he shoots a lot of bullets though. So if you just wanna shoot the lot, he's good for that. The reason he's weaker is just because he actually needs a gun to get going. This is the heavy gunner. He's dependent on his weapons entirely. And he doesn't actually have a good starting gun. This one's kind of okay. But it cannot pick up new ammo. So once you waste ammo, you don't have anything. Movement speed. This guy walks like a grandma. He needs every bit of movement speed he can get.
The stick guys are so deadly. Because this guy can't outrun them. We're fine for now. A little trick there. I'll explain it in a second. So you can see the ammo on the right side. When you switch onto this weapon for the first time, it reloads all of your ammo to the maximum. I can use this once per level to reload my other weapon. Though this weapon isn't terrible itself, but it's like the Gatling gun from the first game. The way it has a startup of a few seconds before it starts firing can be very deadly. If you walk into something stupid. Tear gas, why not? The gimmick with this weapon is that the weapon kit it comes with makes your right click skill not consume as much ammo when you're firing. Oh shit. Oof. So that way you can preserve the ammo from this weapon. Just assume it's a massive shit. I mean it barely does anything. So it's clearly not affecting them a lot in particular. Ow. Too much playing around with the bad weapon. It just slows them, so I guess it's more like a, sm a smoke screen than anything. Yeah, you have to use this on during the onslaught system to do anything with it. But it's not terribly impressive even then. Or do you mean the Gatling gun from the first game? Because this is essentially a Gatling gun. It doesn't have the insane damage it had in the first game though. It, you can get other ammo regeneration in the first game. Ah, the skill that never came to the right guard. Percentage increase in health. Really helpful when you have high health. As long as you don't uh, empty the clip of the Gatling gun in the first game, it will regenerate all of its bullets. So you just needed to stop firing before you, you became fully empty. Obviously, ideally, you have hyperfeet and you can just never use any bullets from that. Oops. Going fine for now. Hmm. None of these are really great. They're all kind of in the okay space. And this is slightly above okay, so I have no reason to switch to a different weapon. Scavenging, so I get plating naturally. Crit chance. Crit chance is good. Yeah, I need, I'm gonna wait out for some more interesting weapon. Come over here, please. Can you start firing about now? Thank you. Only took 50 fucking years. Do we have the Tech 9? Good question. Not a paid DLC though. You just have it in the game. It's one of the better starting pistols, but you need to get in really close. Didn't use it much in the first game, so I don't remember if that's how it worked there too. Damn, this weapon is satisfying though. Ooh, let's make it more satisfying. My friend will be salty if he watches this stream. This upgrade is actually kind of rare and he never gets it. 
Now the weapon looks a bit wimpier for a bit because it has burst fire, so it stops firing after it, the burst. But we can reduce the delay between burst shots with other upgrades, which we will. Until eventually it will massively surpass the original attack speed it had. Also, its damage is much higher now. Ah, uh, this is a mini shotgun in your pocket. No particular use for it. I'll sell, sell it later. More upgrades. Oh, nothing that gives bonus damage. We'll take the movement speed then. This class always needs more movement speed. I haven't looked at any skins uh, in Dark Knights <laughs> in forever. Oops, no ammo. Three old faster. By the way, the, this gun actually stuns on hit. It's one of those weapons that look very basic but are actually kind of broken. This one is super reliable too. You can't ever get some bad set on it. Destroy this thing because it's annoying. Ow! Cars are dangerous, don't fuck around with cars. to the boss, who's going to get melted by this gun. Now there's a bit of RNG with this class, where he has an incredibly awesome skill. Also the game is a bit smaller than it should be on the window. Fixed. Whoa. You could have told me. Box skin tank rockets. Let's see if we can finish him off with the Gatling gun. Run back down, and now we can go to where he spawns. Ah, this didn't do anything. I'm back to the Sego. Let's see if we get the best possible bow upgrade. Ah, uh, second best possible. This completely removes your heat when you reload a weapon, making it impossible to overheat. Also does damage around you. There's another one that buffs any weapon he holds through the roof, but makes his items suck. I was hoping for that one. It really gives him a clearer identity from the other classes, but getting it is kind of RNG. Checking for enemies behind me. Clear. Interesting for heavy gunner. Moving on.
yeah, uh, the mod page is even integrated into the game. I'll show you after the level. It's really good. I think. Though I don't make mods myself, so I can't be a good judge for that. But at least from the user and if you want to install mods, it's really comfortable. You just stick it inside the game and it's uh, ready to go. Kiting stuff away. I feel like I'm playing sniper, but I don't have his range or his damage. Kill this one. Fucking slow. Okay, we're not dead. This dude needs a buff so bad. Come here, drone. Killing it with this to conserve the good weapon ammo. By the way, the purple numbers are backstabs. If you hit them in the back, you do bonus damage. That's what that's about. Getting any kind of slow on this guy is really bad. Because he's slow to begin with. Uh, this thing is a cum tank that shoots uh, foam at you, that slows you down. It also does quite a bit of damage. So it can very easily get me killed. It sprays it all over me. By the way, since the cubes give attack speed, and their attack speed stack, you can gain some pretty ridiculous values. This weapon can't really show it because we changed it from auto to burst. So this is going to be a problem for a little bit. Until we get the weapon fixed up. And then it's going to have infinity attack speed. And then I will start running into ammo problems. Because it will fire its entire clip in 0.2 seconds. But you know, one problem at a time. Hooray, we're not dead. Yeah, the go is always more bullets with this guy. Why else would, you, would I be playing him? Honestly, he's not that bad, he's just RNG. Because getting a good run with him is dependent on what weapons you get. Not so much on how good you are with him. Though you kind of do need... Uh, to be competent with the basic mechanics of the game. To manage with this class. He definitely feels like the most um, synthetic one character out of all of them. Because he has weak abilities. We'll open this later. The Chronos are actually super dangerous <laughs> when you can't just one shot them. Oh yeah, by the way, for people who've played the first game, he does have his ammo regeneration in this skill. The specific kit I'm using it removes the ammo regeneration and replaces it with the chance to not use the bullet. Uh, very bad. This is a suicidal item. It places stun mines. They can very easily stun you and proc to me. I don't like it. I tend to kill myself with it a lot. The item itself is pretty good though, because it also increases the damage of stun targets. Good interaction. Magic Mac. Much weaker in the first game, but helpful here. You know what it does, it rewards the more bullets. The grenade was bugging out and not throwing for some reason. One more update kit. Okay. Oh, random enemy. Now, there's no great upgrade to get from here. I mostly just go for the dash and the onslaught. 
Well, the goal is to kill the final boss, who is in about 5 more levels. But yeah, you can just focus on survival and go forever. This is a funny upgrade. You roll the gacha. It can debuff your... debuff you if you roll bad. We got the buff instead. Though upgrading the power of this thing doesn't matter. Do this is good. Increases the effect duration. And upgrade the dash a bit. Chance to not to consume it is fine with me. Finally, let's open the weapon chest and see if we have anything useful in there. Nope, nope, not, not useful. Let's bolt. Before the fun police comes over. Did I switch out the default grenade? Uh, yeah, he starts with some other skills. I like the cubes more, they're funny. Okay, that should be the last of them. The teleporter loads slower if you're in combat. So it's a bit hard to escape using it. The Iron Shield is honestly his best skill. The thing that makes him invulnerable for 2 seconds, that Breacher also has. I just have more fun with the cubes. That's the only reason I use them on this guy. Eh. Nothing interesting there. Death missiles. Yeah, we'll take her on Sauron. In probably 10 minutes. Or less. No, oh, I got on. Heavy gun restart. You need to play it kind of slowly. Okay, let's start up Synthetic. Uh, Arc Knights. Black screen for a bit. Or I change over the window. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a bit of time to log in. Because they don't have the emulator on the SSD anyway. I have a hard drive for most of my shit. Didn't they used to do this at 7 o'clock? Or is it a time zone thing? Where they don't change time zones, but we do. And on to work nights. Yeah, it's the daylight sav savings thing. That's what I meant. Sorry. Takes a bit of time to vote. That's why I started early. Let's go change the title. 
since we're moving on to synthetic. Ah, uh, no, I haven't had that happen. I ca I change the window size all the time. It doesn't crush it. Case in point. Something specific to you, I reckon. Now just the window in the second. Uh, there we go. About th 35 or something. Okay, stream settings done. Uh, yeah, I'll do the AS4 tournament, tournament later. Oh, show much anyway. I'm going to get so much sleep today. Better for you, doctor. Oh, don't we have maintenance too? Let's have a look. No, it should start at 10. Yeah, from there will be a 10 minute maintenance though. I should have just kept playing synthetic, I guess. Well, we're already here. I suppose they have an unfinished farmer on. Yeah, Wapuma the farmer. Let's see if we can dodge the maintenance ki killing my run while we're waiting around. Yeah, I use Wapuma for AFK farming ingots. Other operators work too, I suppose. It's just consistent and brainless. Because at low difficulty, she solves everything good you want. I very much doubt their softness, considering how she swings the scythe all day, every day. That muscle group is probably ripped. I'm not disagreeing, it's better. Yeah, yeah, fine. Have about five minutes. Oh, this is a mimic. Whoa. We'll just take it now, I guess. Oh, now it's a true statement. I'll try to set up a 4-player game of Synthetic for Saturday or Sunday. Can get some friends on board. And then I'll recruit someone from chat, I guess. If there's not enough people. Well, as long as you don't die to the 4 ships here. Should be fine. Because we'll, Pinecon should split them up a bit. Yeah, it's fine. No, the Corbert. With hard work, 
Even an idiot can get the job done. Oh, and the device. This is such a lucky run. I'll probably save it for later. Can we finish the fight before the maintenance starts? The true challenge. We have 2 minutes and 40 seconds to win this fight. I think that's just less time than it takes. So we should be safe. But I'll use Cutter to kill the last Lux. Just in case. Hopefully there's no Duck or Bear. That could actually kill me. Because the maintenance will start. I assume if the maintenance starts while I'm still in the match, I can't just uh, stop the run and then update it after 10 minutes because it won't connect to the server without the update. So let's hope we have 3 slugs there. One minute and thirty seconds. Whatever you can see, Just to make sure he doesn't die. Okay, we're safe. Nice. Good skin then. Damn, what is this run? We're not doing this fight. No time before the maintenance starts. Okay, we're gonna stop here. And we'll wait uh, for later. Because uh, it's such a solid start, I don't want to waste it. We should now get kicked out of the game. Ten minute maintenance is a lot better though. It used to be an hour before. Does anyone remember when they changed it? I'm so used to the ten minute one. Rather the opposite. I'm not used to the 10 minute maintenance. Don't like VTuber. I can rant about them for a while, but let's leave it at that. Let's have the maintenance banner up. Letter for you, doctor. Oh, it just still hasn't started. Whoa. The fuck is this shit? Where the hell is this from? The hell? Have no idea what this is. Oh, because we're getting chapter 13. It's some bullshit for that. Good to know. Ah, two more weeks. So we basically have two dead weeks until we get... Uh, we have DOS and basically two, two, two dead weeks. Okay, we need to go and update the game now. There we go.
Yeah, I'm extremely sane. That's why my sanity is overflowing. Hmm? What the hell happened now? Arc Knights. I don't think it's particularly hard on a strategic level. Let's close Arc Knights for a bit and open it again. But it's a massive stat check. It's a stat check event. Uh, you won't struggle if you have like a super maxed out team. But it's uh, the opposite of new player friendly. It's new player hostile. Yeah, I guess we're waiting for 8 minutes. Before we can download the update. Ah, just a... Uh, that's fine with me, I guess. A bit of rest. Where I get to not look at the... Monitor. No, I've been playing synthetic for 3 hours. I'm fine with resting my eyes for a bit. The cool thing about the event is that it doesn't eat any, stam any sanity though. So you don't have to click the candy when I repeat a stage a hundred times. The S stage can only be done on S1. I'll give it a try and see what I can do with it. Because it was done on S1 with buffs. I'll see if I can do it buffless. But I think S2 and S3 are not reasonable. For 4 stars. Because it's just a big stat check. That's hard to break. Nope, let's go and see. Well, 3 star players don't care, they just get not to play. Yeah, it's still a date expired thing, so now do we get the update? Yeah, there we go. Not even 10 minute maintenance. Pretty good. Which isn't a surprise because it's a 100 megabyte upload. Okay, should be in. Let's go. Letter for you, Doctor. Oh, I barely remember. Okay, so this is the stupid B, A, and S, right? Yeah, and C, apparently. What the fuck is B then? So it's explaining shit I can read for myself. Okay, this was the tutorial map. Then B was the first trio map. A was this. So trauma intervention was... Right, this was the enemy, enemy waves. Okay, we'll try this later. Let's do the main map first. And these are the rewards, got it. C3. 1 is the easiest. 3 is the hardest. Right. That's obvious enough. Right, you need to do C3 to unlock the next area, apparently. No, this one's a tutorial, so it doesn't really matter what they bring. Uh, just adding the usual stuff. Okay, uh, we'll explain what the tutorial says. It's really not a complicated event. There is a big boss enemy that gets stronger every every stage. Ew. It's 
I suppose it's going to explain that the enemies have very buff stats or something. Because I'm not sure what C3 is supposed to be otherwise. Oh yeah, uh, you can deploy operators on this. It's extremely not obvious that you can. But you can do this. And when it explodes, it fires an infinite attack. Like so. It's made to be as obtuse as possible, because you don't get the normal green effect. Revealing that there's something there. Needs to be an operator with the direction, I reckon. Yeah, you can't leak shit here. It does damage, but it does a very small dot. You barely feel it. You can kind of see that the enemies are extra bulky. Or maybe you can't. Depends on how familiar you are with horse stats, I guess. Okay. Annoying enemy. Everything here is just super bulky in this event. That's the whole gimmick of the event. Very, very, very bulky enemies. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, but on paper, I'm not a big fan of it, but the, I think the event itself works fine. Where you don't, you just don't get the trash spam, you just get the final wave every time, basically. After one million years, Jai will win. Yeah, basically. And the Ifrit attack reduces the rest or something. I'm sure I could read it here. Uh, it's not really comparable to Pinch Out, because you don't really have to stow shit. And uh, health values don't go in the millions, so you can just meander the shit out of everything. Random robots having 5 million health wasn't really the problem with Pinch Out in the first place. Okay, so now we have the boss. Sword Smelter. I'm not gonna pretend I can read that. He has skills. Too many of them are not ready to go that. I'll just explain them in game. Okay, this will probably be fine. So, basically, the boss targets the last deployed operator. Taunt mechanics apply normally and puts them in a coffin. Kind of remember this stage looking differently. Maybe I'm just high. I'm here to help. Ooh, so, for example, now he's gonna cough in Mortal. And then you need to break that coffin to redeploy the operator. Or was it the chains that killed them slowly? And when you retreat, it's a coffin, yeah. You can kind of abuse that. The coffin has really high defense. Pretty low health. When you break it, the operator is back. It's the devourer mechanic from chapter 11, I think. Yeah, 11. You just need to manually retreat the operator. Most importantly, the stupid coffin things have taunt, so you kind of need to play around with that. Also, he does fairly high amounts of damage. We'll have Jaya here to absorb the next coffin. Because Myrtle isn't available anymore. Finally, when the boss dies, he'll summon 1 billion drones. That explode your entire squad. This becomes much more annoying later. Trust me on that much. You kind of just have to manage the coffin mechanic. Hi. 
Let's kill him. And we'll go into 1 XP so you can see what he does. So he hits the ground and starts spawning these orbs. The then track a certain operator. In this case, Meteor. They do AoE damage on the way. And if they reach the operator, they explode for a massive AoE attack. If they hit Meteor, they will kill every operator they have here, basically. Also, apparently, operators that die here get coffined. I'm mostly sure that this is specific to this stage. I don't remember dealing with this in A3. But maybe I just didn't let anything die there, so I've forgotten. Normally, then, he transitions into his next phase. But here we don't have another phase. These things take lives, by the way. You need to deal with them. Otherwise, they'll fly in the blue box and uh, kill you. Anyway. Bubbles back up. Yeah, how, let's see how we're gonna kill that. Because it doesn't have target priority. Okay. He is attacks it over the defender. After a while, it should start going up towards the blue box. And then he just kills you. It's kind of a troll boss. Also stats. You can see things actually doing damage to Bubble. So the most important thing is to just have something to manage the uh, coffins. It doesn't have to be a fast redeploy because it resets your cooldown. But you probably want to use some operator that's cheap on DP. Myrtle is particularly good. Because when you break her out of the coffin. She just gets to immediately use her skill again. So she kind of refunds her DP cost. This isn't really the real boss. This was just the first phase. On this map it ends before you get to the actual second part of the boss fight. Now, do you remember the squad I used to beat A3? Because it was some annoying ass bullshit. Okay. Uh, where are the buffs? You also have buffs you can use. Reward, view map, blah, blah, blah. No, seriously, where are the buffs? What the fuck? There should be buffs here. There's only one more you need to unlock. Do you need to do something to unlock them? Because you don't see the buffs here. You need to lose to get the buffs. Whoa. Annoying. Okay, I definitely won't win on my first try because I don't remember the deploy order for this bullshit. So that's fine. Uh, it was these assholes. Actually, Bubble S1 will do fine. Quora. Perfumer S1. Susuru. Chaye. Show. And yeah, that was it. Well, Typhon just insta kills the wisps that spawn from the boss. So I'm not really sure why any of this is a hard counter to Typhon in particular. Like, Typhon is just a physical damage shop. He doesn't do anything special. So that's kind of a weird statement. Okay, uh, I needed to sacrifice some operator here. It was something annoying like that. Also, I needed Myrtle to block. I don't remember what tiles I'm supposed to use for this shit. Yeah, I half remember it. So after Mur May gets captured, we kind of left her there. We're now gonna do the same to Jaya. But now this thing towns. So we have to break it out. The problem is that we get uh, DP rush really hard. And don't have time to deploy our shit. And I half re only half remember what I'm supposed to do here. We can't afford Myrtle to get chained. So we need to deploy some other shit. Bubble goes here. Then we sacrifice Jaya again. And now Bubble is gonna die. Because we don't have enough healing. Also, the boss can move. Okay, now we died. 
this is a squad I've done it before. I just need to remember what the fuck the deploy order was. It was something really goofy where we had a coffin stay on the field for a hundred years. Anyhow, so we lost. Where the fuck are my buffs? This is bullshit. <laughs> So is this how many points you get for every stage clear? I missed it. I missed... Oh, enable buffs. Whoa. On the... Right here is a list of combat buffs. You, guess you get less points per clear if you use buffs. But you can get all of the rewards even if you do use buffs. So don't be afraid to abuse them. Also, the rewards aren't even that great anyway, so you really shouldn't bother. Okay, so let's see what the buffs are. I remember they were so trash I just didn't bother with them, because there was nothing interesting. Yeah, 10 attack speed for medic and snipers, 15 attack speed for medic and snipers, 10 attack, 15 attack for casters and supporters. They're really whatever. A bit of max health and defense. And then we have some lava specific buffs. Uh, a question for people who've bothered with this event more than I have. Can you replay stages like you can in TN2? Or do you only get the rewards once based on how high you clear? Because in TN2 you can just play the first stage over and over and get all of the rewards. Can you do the same thing here? Your operators take less damage from the lava. Allied high ground operators take 15% less damage. Okay, so less damage from lava. Enemies take more damage from arts. Yeah, here is a buff for click. And enemies take more damage from the lava itself. Okay, before we go and do this, I just want to check what the other part of the event was, because I never played this, so I have no idea what this is at all. Ah, uh, no, I definitely didn't use Totter. I used Cho and Jaya and just pushed them back and forth. I tried using Totter and he, he just didn't work for me. Am I wrong on that? I guess I'd have to check my own video. I'm fairly sure that Totter didn't do anything for me, so I gave up on him. I'll have to go and look it up, and I'm lazy. I have no idea what this mod is, so let's just add random operators and go. Let's see what this is. It's been a while since I beat a now I'll get a dog rush and die instantly, because you don't have Myrtle, right? Rainforest on fire. Rainforest, my ass. This is a fucking volcano. So we have a timer and then the stage ends. Oh, it is a dog rush, basically. So, do, am I supposed to survive for one minute or kill something in that one minute? Also, we have waves. I guess we'll find out. Explosive spiders go here. Oh, we kind of want to gummy them. So they don't blow up pinecone. Prevent defense loss. Ew, that's bad. Humus is about to die. <laughs> oh, so everything dies when the timer runs out. Okay, I got the gist of it. So I just deploy it on here and win. Okay. It's that kind of stage. Yeah, this is just a simple meme stage. Not that there's anything wrong with that, to be clear. Yeah. 
Crocodiles do more damage. Okay, this one's kind of funny. Let's play it out. A lot of people don't have eaten raised, which is, you know, their mistake, but... A lot of people just raise 5 and 6 stars and don't have stuff like Ethan, even though he's universally good. Okay, so what do we really want? Um, we need one operator to deal with all the spiders. I don't really want Jaya, because he's just a DP sink. That pest. Pinecone makes sense with Ethan. Shirayuki. And then maybe Indigo. A caster to keep my shit alive. Yeah, yeah. Not sure what I want to sow. Does Humus die to spiders? Probably. So, use Jaya to just murder them all. Have no idea what the other waves are, so let's just throw... Some ra random operators in. We can still bring Humus and Cutter. Now nah, there's no point in Cutter. I'll tag if I need to drop something. And maybe another medic. His team is all over the place, but whatever. Pudding is already in the squad. Unless they messed something up. I also forgot to look if this mode has the buffs too, or if they're only for the other mode. I'm fine with it either way. Have no real preference for this. Go eat them. Bully the crocodiles for me. Uh, one tile back makes more sense. Oh yeah, Jaya is the one that's supposed to fight the crocodiles. Oops. Well, we can deal with that for now. Do we use a more for tower? Indigo for now. Not really enough DP yet. Not fine, we'll drop a Jaya. That's a lot of crocodiles. Oh, the wave just ended. I forgot the wave ends, shit. <laughs> I could have just played around that. Ethan is super broken here, because you just stow, I guess. You don't actually have to kill anything. Didn't fully consider that. So, grey. Then, pine cone here. Yeah, this should be everything I need, more or less. The fuck? The bird has no health. Oh, because killing you fucks you over because of the stun. I get it. That's cool. Okay, this wave is done. Because it doesn't kill last long enough for the entire wave. Will the bird respawn after I kill it? I'm really curious how this works now. Stay still, please. Thank you. Ooh, everything evaporated. What a nasty wave. Let's see the next one. This is fun. I think the Myrtle side needs more more cover. Yeah, our spirit's probably good here. Fun mode. I like it. I should have played it more on CN. Retreat on next hit. And just keep this from murdering Humus. Which they absolutely will, and we might as well just retreat him now. This one's going through. Oh, that's true. Nothing we can do about it. 
Grey Dying was a shame, because he has a great skill for this mode. Holy shit, 1 million spiders. Grey is a goner again. Yep, retreat Grey so we can keep it on alive. <laughs> Let's send Jaya to the other side. <laughs> okay, I have this mode. This is pure goat. <laughs> okay, I get what I need though. Uh, I just need Grey further back so he can stall the last wave. I'll try to optimize this later. This shit is fun. Alright, uh, how much is that worth? Okay, so 40 points are about one level. So you definitely don't need to try hard this event too much. Yeah, this is a Mostima memes, meme event. What's the other one? Oh, it's Night Assholes with artillery. Yeah, these weren't uh, related to the MN enemies. Let's do this again. Uh, Humus isn't doing anything here for me. Instead of Jaya. Or rather to help with Jaya. Also we don't need to tag Because we don't really need to kill shit. I think you only get the rewards once. Conviction for the self stun would also be kind of goat. Also, this arrow is a liar. Why is it saying they go there? They don't. Lying cheater arrow. I'm so disappointed in it. So we don't have to bother killing. We can just use the skill now. Yeah, Indigo here is fine. Not sure where I'd find a good spot for Grado. Uh, we'll think about it later. The second wave we need. We, there's no point in deploying him now. Because this guy is blocking out. Arrange tiles for me. Can activate now. Okay, this wave is done. I think this tile is fine as long as I help Jaya not leak. I don't need the medic anymore unless I leak spiders through. Actually, can we just start fighting them there? For now, this is fine. When they start overflowing, we'll use Puden Quest 1. Yeah, like 
and this delays them a fair bit. 50 seconds of coverage from these guys, Grey can help too. If Jai starts faltering, we'll sacrifice Pinecone to delay this even more. We don't really need to deal with them, just delay them a fair bit. So Earth Spirit is the last skill we're going to use. Actually, there's no point in even retreating much, because I can't kill the spiders at this point. Okay, so just delay them as long as possible. <laughs> no, the crocodiles of death. There's too many of them. Damn, it was close. Yeah, I know she stuns, but not a 4 star, so I won't use it if I don't have to. I'm not really uh, trying to optimize anything here. I'm just screwing around with the event. Okay, so what do we want to change? Because the spiders will inevitably leak through. And we don't have a good AoE silence. We'll then last for a bit. The simplest solution is to just move Ethan back. And have Shirayuki kill the spiders at a distance. Yeah, we're gonna give up on stopping the spiders from coming through. I could have also changed the team, but... What we'll do is we'll just move it and one tail back and have Shiryuki on this side. And then Grey here. We can still have Jai help with the first wave. And the second, just so we can preserve cooldowns for later. Well, cooldowns don't matter too much. I guess now I won't go like this, because it will help later. Lacking a bit of AoE on the bottom lane at the moment. I like how it doesn't pause you from redeploying operators between waves. That's always annoyed me. Hooray, didn't explode. Well, now you will, but... Good time to test the basic idea. I guess. Why does he even have block? Oh, Berto. I've done this before, and I always forget about it. We can just have her in, in the back here, it's fine. We can wait a little more. Yeah, now it's fine. This is fine. Well, not really, but... That's definitely not fine. Fuck, Piton died. That's gonna fuck me on the next wave. Wait, the spiders exploded so everything died. <laughs> okay, now I'm dead. I wasn't expecting the extra explosions from the spiders. That one was just throw. I can just reset, but might as well give it a try. We're already here. Yeah, AoE is better here. Boom, everything dies. That's about all we have here. I just the spiders killing everything at the end, it kind of screwed me. That would be a monumentally stupid way to for it to die. 
That was a monumentally stupid way for Ethan to die. It was just screwing around. Uh, Suzu S3 is that to win, yeah. Any kind of slow skill. I can make a better score than this, but I'm lazy. I'm too lazy to change operators around. Nah, Gitano S2 is, use is useless here. You don't really want to bother with killing anything. Just delay them enough so it doesn't matter. Only meaningful difference is that we want to... I uh, feel like I forgot to deploy something here. Yeah. So we just want Shirayuki to camp the spiders here. I need them to be a bit safer. We can, all, we can explode all of them around here and then we're fine. So we probably want to put Enku like this. So she can help me with the spiders. And Jaya can get rid of them early. It's kind of throw that I used the spot that killed me last time for Myrtle. We can retreat now. Don't use Myrtle as one, because she's in a bad spot. And now I can use some medic to heal Pinecone. And Jack can be back on time. We don't want to get rid of Myrtle quite yet. Can probably get another few waves for later. No, oh, he went out of range. Next hit should be on Pinecone, I hope. Guess not. We're getting flooded with trash again. Pinecone should be a hundred percent dead there. Yep. This should hold true. Ethan's gonna die again. Oh no, spider explosion this time. The fuck? I'm kind of confused. And why not? Okay, this thought is actually fine for Jai. The fuck do I do with her spirit then? Oh, we'll have her here. If she dies later, that's fine with me. Use a pull of this. And this delays it a fair bit. We can use all of the skills now. They'll be back for the hard part later. Yeah, I can just point Murto downwards. Also, Murto doesn't even need to be here. This is just a bad habitual thing. Where you're not paying attention and you do the stupid thing. Also, I don't really need a medic for now. Maybe this to get rid of the crocodiles for now. Okay, we didn't leak on this wave. We will definitely leak on the next wave. Also, Shiryuki might explode. Grey is better than her spirit, so I'm not really sure. Oh yeah, I should have done that. Can stop a lot of spiders from coming through. Once the endless wave starts, yeah, that's it, we're done. Grey's will shit on everything. Um, we can give up on Jaya. Just in case we need some last minute stalling. No need to waste the DP. Sadly, no medic for Riton. So we're relying on Grey for a bit. Oh, damn, I'll die to the exact same part. Earth Spirit wouldn't help with this wave either. So I guess I need to replace Pinecone with something that just does more damage. 
not damage is now what I meant. I need something to slow down this area. So this is where I want um, Earth Spirit maybe, in Pinecone spot. Or maybe I can just have a Medic here with him. But that's unreliable, because it's just RNG. Hmm. Could also just stop the spiders from coming through entirely with Earth Spirit. I don't bother adjusting exactly what squad they bring every time. Because I just want to figure out how the stage works. I can figure out exactly what counters is in my squad later. Let's learn what I need to bring on this side first. I can tell that Cho would be a super strong thing on this pick. By just blasting all the spiders away for example. Actually. Let's have her back, back out a bit. Don't one shot me, please. Can also heal like this for now. Yeah, seems functional enough. Better treat this one. Not sure why you have Pycon in the squad. I don't need damage, I just need to delay shit. Yeah, that's fine. We don't need a medic after this anyway. And we can hover spirit like this. There are the enemies. It says two, right? Yeah. Checking because they, my default skill is of spirit as well. It's like you official but harder. Two leakers. Uh, we need to retreat something to heal him. But retreating... Okay, they all died. Wait until the spiders start coming through. Ethan's about to explode, not much we can do about that, but we'll add what healing we can. Oh, the heal helped, just barely. Charge faster, please. Okay, wait, we're safe. Our spirit doesn't get to do anything, though. Peak Earth Spirit usage, right there. 
you can use her to slow the spider wave so she doesn't mat so they don't so they never come to the right side. Okay, this is pretty fun where you have a timer instead of uh, an enemy count. I don't mind it. Uh, how much was that worth? Uh, pretty, just a few levels, but we have a lot of these missions. We'll check the other one too. Oh, wait, why do we have to update the squad for every single one? That's so true. I'm bringing about the same squad anyway. No, I guess not. Somebody mentioned the hole, so let's see if we can abuse it. And then all of the stuff would slow down. Mm -hmm. Have two more swords for stuff. Not sure I have two more operators. I would care to bring. Yeah. And a medic in case we need some healing. The fuck is this puffing? Are they just gonna fall in the hole by themselves? Okay, so we want rope here for these spiders, I guess. Nope, Jai can just kill them himself. Alright, probably less. Arranged operators here, more melee stuff. I can't push the shields too. This guy is too beefy. But if I have rope as well, I can pull all the crabs here, for example. Yeah, not sure exactly what squad I need here. Yeah, I can't pull this. I don't have the force for it. Oh yeah, they don't have global range. I forget. So we just won't start damage on this lane, because we can't really pull them. And pushing them is too much work. You can kind of do it with Shaw in several pushes. Ah, this map is super easy. Can we see the next wave or will we die too fast? Too fast. Kind of depends on item binds. You don't have to bother killing the artillery, because you can just give them some bait. Not much I can do with the hose though, which is kind of boring. For me, I guess. Fine for everyone else. Uh, just go with a bunch of... Go away. Perfume RS2. Where's Matternhorn? Because these guys don't do that much damage. It's possible to use an, uh, an operator to push the artillery into the hole, but you can just kill them with way, way less effort. So there's no need to think about it in those terms. Mm -hmm. We have Shiryuki in this squad, right? I guess we don't. Yeah, I don't need Gitano. In case we need to super stall. And why not be in stock? Actually, I have too many stuff here. Bring up Pinecone too. 
in case we need more physical AoE. So the artillery are kind of wimpy, and you can just beat them to death with vanguards. Oh yeah, that's why we got crap first, to protect the artillery. Whoa. Kind of forgot about them. Can't push while this thing is here, Ooh, or we'll fly into the next dimension. I'll just chill out until it dies. Almost is being kind of unimpressive. But gets the job done. Today, oh wait, there's archers here. That's pointless style to deploy on. The tiles I deployed kind of make no sense, but the basic idea is there. Because this guy could have already been dead if I just had Beanstalk. Uh, scrap one tile back. Look at Murto beating the shit out of them. Yeah, the basic idea is sound. Need a different deploy order. The shield archers die to eat and bind. It's too much work to push them. Okay, some slight additions to where we deploy shit. Oops, kind of messed up with that. Oh yeah, whatever. Functional enough. Or not. Maybe show just dies to crabs. Curse the crabs. We'll redeploy Beanstalk in a bit. We'll try to keep the frontline guy undeployed for now. Have this guy clean up. Oops, we leaked the shield. It happens. So we can now just set up like this. Pudding is really strong here. Just kill this guy real quick, so he stops being a pest. I hate how the explosions can still hit, it's so annoying. Deploy this guy to tank everything, can fank on delete that, well it didn't really matter, because it will die on its own, but yeah the basic idea would work, Shao isn't doing anything here though. Oh, this guy hitting your medic on this tile would be annoying. And archers. Whoa. Yeah, so we need some equivalent of hummus on this tile. To just get rid of all of the artillery. And then we can eat on everything else just fine. Yeah, a basic idea should be fine. We can ignore all of the damage debuffs. 
Uh, Stealth is fine. Dvigna is better. Beanstalk isn't working well. Just bring something with more armor. And Myrtle plus Vigna on one side and Humus on the other. And we'll just ignore everything else on the map. I don't really need show with the current idea anyway. This isn't really comparable to SSS in any meaningful way. Except that they're both Arknights, I guess. If that's what you mean. I mean... Why? The reason SSS is annoying has nothing to do with enemy stats. So just because this has high stats, it doesn't mean anything, you know? Yeah, like this is fine. And just deploy almost first. Pretty sure Matterhorn will just leave off his own stats and doesn't need healing. Yeah, he's fine. Who must to delete everything there? So we don't have to deal with the stupid artillery fucks. We can use Shaw to tank for archers. Or you know, just do that. That's nice too. Should probably switch to S1. To that end. Don't think they can actually kill her. But I also don't have a good eat. Should have changed her to S1. I'm only using her here to tank for Shiryuki. Because of the higher defense. This is easier than the first map, to be honest. Not sure what's doing so much damage to Shiryuki there though, because Shou has higher priority. Everything is debuffed a lot. That's not a big deal. Could have just had pudding here, by the way, and saved myself a bunch of trouble. Also, need to use a different medic. Pure stream is would be the choice here, because I can also heal Humus. Oh, the range tiles being cursed is a bit annoying. But yeah, we can just use the setup, just replace Perfumer with Pure Stream. These two don't need healing. Let's just wait around to see what else comes up. A one sword guy there, an artillery there. There is an artillery behind the sword guy, but Humus might be able to kill the artillery anyway. Uh, Humus can heal himself. He won't take meaningful damage. So, show S1 to get rid of more archers. A replace with Pure Stream. Definitely don't need Pinecon. We have Pudding in this squad. Yeah, I do already. So add a second medic if we need it. I'll probably optimize this later. They're kind of fun. I'm just playing around now. Uh, yeah, this should all be fine. Today, little apple. Take those I think. 
Not sure if she can push them all the way into the hole. I guess we're about to find out. Yeah, she'll do fine here. For the first wave, we'll retreat her in a bit. It's just so we don't have to deploy ranged units. Quite yet. Next rocket. Yeah, I guess Gray first. I thought you wanted me here to fix the log. What? Do you think you're gonna grind me? This tile is usable too. As long as it's not artillery bait. We can retreat Myrtle at this point. We'll deploy perfume or for to heal something if we need to we don't really need to for now I shall be your yeah Vigna kind of needs some um, healing Pudding can delay. Pudding can delay anything, so we can just retreat her. Have Myrtle down for now. Another way to heal Vigna. And we can deploy Matterhorn when we need him again. We don't really need to use a skill for these guys. There's one too many. Let's see if we can kill one. The last round here will be kind of nasty. Because of all the extra art artillery. Almost done. Yeah, we should be set. Fun map. Alright, so that's all the unlocked stuff in this. We'll get a few more maps in a few days. I'll probably do all of them, because I think the this mode is fun. Kind of favors styling a bit too much. But... I guess I'm fine with that. For this other mod, I've already done it, so I'll just um, copy my old video and just explain what I'm doing in it and why I'm doing it, and we'll go with that. And then I'll try and do, see if I can do S2 or S1 without buffs. For now, though, it's time for me to go to sleep. Good night.